We are live, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. This is episode six of Savage Kingdoms Dark Tides. I'm your game master for the evening, Mike Yao. I'm the creator of Savage Kingdoms role-playing game. This is Savage Kingdoms third edition. These are my lovely players right here to my left and uh, a diagonal and bottom. Uh, the giant robot slash iron golem is again, Ian. Um, so uh, Matt, we'll, we'll start with Matt. He'll just do a quick intro. I am Matt Davis, and I've been playing Savage Kingdom since, 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 yeah, since its inception, basically. I was one of the original playtesters, and uh, I am playing Kadir Al-Kadir tonight, the Water Jan healer. And The secret's out. Well, I mean... No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear anything. It's all right. <laughs> right, right, I mean, right. Nobody really knows what he, he, he could be an elf. Who knows what he, he could be a she? I mean, he could, who knows what he actually yeah, is? But tall, slender, yeah. somewhat handsome dude. Exactly. So yes, I'm it's, playing Kadir. Yeah. Kadir. Bit of a storm in his eyes. So yeah, everybody. He's a uh, Matt's one of Matt's awesome. He's one of my original playtesters, and we actually met doing a show, Tarzan the Musical. Um, Didn't know yeah. we knew we met before that. I, I think that was when we met. <laughs> I knew Larry first. Mm, could be no, because. I don't remember, but uh, I don't know, maybe no, because I remember giving oh, it your, no, I, I I your apartment. I did know you first because I I suggested you to the director. Yeah, you you suggested me for for to for for me to play a gorilla. Yeah. So so anyway, sidetrack. Um, yes. So Madison. Hello. Uh, I have been playing Savage Kingdoms uh, starting this year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not a competition don't worry <laughs> and we've also performed together on stage yes several times yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and i am playing marichka the pirate slash sorceress cool. who is not magnetic but apparently attracts every man she meets <laughs> <laughs> <This is. laughs> they like to be bossed around yes they like to be slapped around too so well yeah I, i'd say at least <laughs> Four out of five of us. So, Ian. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Ian, the pilot of Toric. Uh, th th this is a competition, right? For for how long we've been doing a certain thing? Uh, maybe. maybe. We're just making good fun. We're just comparison. Comparison. Oh, that's, that's not a word, but okay. No, that's not a word. <laughs> I've been playing for a hot second. This is eighty percent of my games for Savage Kingdoms have come from this campaign. I have realized. And Ian has started to game master. He runs a campaign on Thursdays, which I actually get to play in, which is cool. It's really weird playing in the game you design, the setting you design, and pretending you don't know certain things. Actually, it's really kind of fun. Honestly, I really, oh God, I love this world. It's just, it's so well developed and so well held together. Ian's trying to get bonus XP. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it's working. All right, good. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, oh, uh, audience, so Randall, we're not sure. Uh, nobody's ever quite sure about Randall. It's going to be a shame if Randall's not here for the final session. I see that loving lings under Randall for a while. Well, not final um, session, but. For a while, trip. yeah. Speaking of which, Ho since we hopefully not. that, for those watching it, we will be on a one-month hiatus as okay. like a rehearsal for a show, and then we'll be back. Um, but really, since it's alternating Wednesday, we're probably only, only going to miss like the one normal yeah. session, I think. So anyway. maybe two, depending. Yeah. Might might be two, yeah. But um, so uh, we'll just go ahead and start because Randall's not here yet, but he might join us uh, a little bit later. Hopefully, he's the, the guy who plays uh, Malik. The sort of Elvis Azirian bard, uh -huh, quartermaster. And uh, so <laughs> <laughs> last, we, last we left off, oh, wait, let me, uh, let me set my screen correctly here. Awesome. All right. Everybody's on roll 20. So audience at home, we do use roll 20. You probably already know that. Most everybody does online. Um, although there's fantasy grounds too, right? And I think there's a new one that's out now. Just can't remember the name of it. So we last left off our intrepid crew here um, who first met each other, going back to episode one, um, in game terms only been like five days ago. So it's only been five days since you guys escaped the slave vessel. Or not escaped it, you're still on it. Uh, but you're not chained to it anymore. 
And you picked up a crew in Fearthport, which is in Southern Berthia, and a crew of 10, uh, one of which happened to be Kadir here. And um, the other was Connor, Connor Gernsman, uh, Gernixman from the Emerald Isles, Emerald Islands, and uh, that sort of guy. And there's like a woman, Bruna is her name. And everybody else, they haven't really learned their name. They're just kind of crew members for the most part. And so the biggest thing we last left off, uh, they, they left Fearthport and they sailed for, if I recall up here on the map, it's about a day and a half later, two days later, actually two full days. And during the evening, they uh, caught wind of, or caught sight of, um, actually it wasn't quite evening, it wasn't quite nightfall a ship passing. And you guys were trying to stay close to the coast, if I recall. You were sailing in between the, the, some of the islands and staying. Uh, sort of risky, but gives you good cover. And which kind of paid off because the ship that you saw was sailing out, outside of that and probably didn't even notice you. And you guys kind of came out and uh, became hunter and they became prey. Turns out they uh, may or may not have been a Crimson Skull pirate vessel as well. And so there was some uh, combat from a distance, particularly with sorcery involved and demons being summoned and sent over there. And um, Torak was wanting to board big time, but by the time you did board their vessel, the fight was already out of them. They had lost people to, like at least eight of their crew to the uh, ice demon that was summoned by Norichka from a supernatural pact that she has and, or may or may not have. And, um, yeah, she looks very innocent there. <laughs> and I summoned, um, summoned the glacier that, that uh, yeah. th busted their ship up. The dude just, <laughs> the like, ice floor. Floor. Yeah, he froze water into this giant ice floor, which they struck. And uh, that definitely <laughs> did a little damage to their... The main thing it did to them was kind of slow them off and throw them off course. But it did seem like it uh, did some minor damage to the hull. So long story short, they surrendered. Uh, there was only... I can't remember how many I said. I've got it written down in my notes here. Yeah, um, nine of them, nine crew members surrendered to you. The other seven or eight looks like they were killed by the demon. And that's where we last left off. And I think Torek had been going up and down from the uh, the cargo bay uh, holds below. Yes, yeah, gathering things before he was called to a duel. Yep. Right, and so that was really kind of the very last thing that happened is that the captain uh, challenged you to single combat and sort of, <laughs> and a duel went <laughs> off. Torek won, but Torek was a little surprised that the captain was either better than he thought or maybe just got really lucky. Uh, it was a little bit of both, honestly. He's a respectable <laughs> opponent, that's for sure. A worthy opponent. So leaving Torek actually kind of wounded, but not enough to be staggered, if I recall. Not to that point. Can we be reminded of the loot? Because um, I know there were some maybe important items in the smaller chests. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I have, that there were some urns. Down, yeah, there were some urns with coins in them. Yeah. Three to four hundred bronze coins, 150 silver coins, a book, a map, two scrolls, and uh, bottles and vials of rare perfumes and Predonian fire mm -hmm. is what I have written down. Most in addition to their food stores yeah. and such. Okay, so the book, the map, Fredonian fire, and then perfumes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So a decent haul, but not like a massive score. And I'm not sure, did Torex uh, share the coins or at least mention them? No, he did the not. <laughs> okay. uh, he he took he said the silver. There, there are coins in the vase or something. I think, yeah, he took the silver, but he let us know that the bronze was there, so. He took the silver because he's going, well, he took some of the silver, I think. How much? I think I wrote it down in my character sheet. 140 silver, it. 50 silver total, 150 silver. Okay, yeah, 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 I think I took it all because I have 200 silver marked down under my wealth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, you, that's all of it. The majority of it is going to a uh, a, a new ballista, though. Hmm. <laughs> One map we figured out the map was a Brithian uh, treasure map or a Brithian Navy treasure map. Mm -hmm. I have that Suppo written supposedly, yeah. Yep, it's a treasure hunt. <laughs> okay, Blue Star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I gotta, I gotta find <laughs> sorry, the need to go. annoyed, annoyed, voice. annoyed. <sighs> puts upon all the time. 
I would like to see Blue Star and Marichka interact with each other. Oh, it would be hilarious. <laughs> I, would, I would love to do that. We need crossover. I would do it. I'm, I would totally do it. That's one of the fun things about GMing is sometimes you're, you have two NPCs that are interacting with you. It was, <laughs> you have to remind oh, yourself, you're like, okay, this is about the players. Just do a very, make it a very quick scene. <laughs> it very... Oh, I wish you guys could have seen the glory of another character called Gormel. I believe he was first advancement, and while facing up, while facing him up, it was a one shot. He was meant to die to a dragon, to a shadow dragon, um, as part of a setup to a an actual event in game, in a proper campaign. Um, both of the characters in the one shot were supposed to die. The dragon consecutively critically fails and Gormel consecutively critically succeeds. Gormel killed the dragon. Nice. The dragon should have retreated. Yeah. It was... The, the problem is, is he grappled the dragon and the dragon critically failed to uh, <laughs> avoid this thing. <laughs> it was ridiculous. You could ask Danny about it. He'll tell you all about uh, Gormel. He was the one doing it. That was like an early, uh, that was like a D&D &D version of Torek, right? Uh, basically, <laughs> Torek is the spiritual successor to Gormel. All right, we should probably get to the story. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Decide what we were going to do with the crew that we have captured. We were, there were several options thrown around. One was going to be um, put them on, on an island and... Mm -hmm. You know they get to figure out survival on their own um the other option was turning um, them in for the reward in, for the reward which would make us privateers i guess um and then the third option was just to kill them mm -hmm. so, they're definitely still alive he surrendered yeah so he doesn't, he doesn't say too much um Although at some point he does kind of speak up and you could just maroon us like you said you might do, but Captain Marichka, if that's your name, I don't think you've uh, I never ah, really stayed to what you've been saying so far. So I don't know if I trust you. Oh, you never gave it? Yeah. No, um, I never gave it to him. He, so <laughs> he, he just refused it. flat out to, to give her name time yeah. after time. You, you notice Orlando whispering in that captain's ear. Clearly telling your name to. No, <laughs> <laughs> I guess our letters are the ship. <laughs> <laughs> or take care of Orlando. All right. Well, I have, I have an opinion of which. An opinion. Of what we should do, but perhaps I should listen to the rest of my crew, see what they think. Hey. Work shrugs in he response. Just kind of backs off, holding his wounds. <laughs> Is really? it we, don't, we don't have an opinion, Torek. <coughs> he is a worthy fighter. <laughs> and he shrugs again. Hmm. Is he is it wise to leave an enemy alive? That's also fair. We are spend crazy. them in fear or take their lives. They Either would have or killed us, I'm sure. I believe that the second option turn them in and get an award in the process. They end up in jail at least for a time until maybe they're- Or executed. They escape, maybe they're bribed out, but it won't be our concern at that point. Landos kind of agrees. We could turn, turn them over to the authorities of his mandos. Uh, they will probably be hanged. Or oh, Brithia. Yeah, Paris one soon. Then again, in Ismondos, uh, they might be freed. I am not so sure. Some of my people have been known to turn to piracy uh, quite often. Is this, catapult, on the coast. is this catapult bolted down, like attached to the boards? Yes. Yeah, it's bolted. It is? It's mounted, yeah. Need a wrench! How do I dismount it? <laughs> is there a clear way that Torek might know to dismount it here? I mean, there's some bolts. Um, you can make a crafting check, see if you can figure out how <laughs> to do it without... Torek, please, please do not destroy 
that weapon. We can take it, but please don't destroy Hold it up. in the process. You'll have to repeat that. I pulled out my headphones as <laughs> soon as listening. you started talking. <laughs> I apologize. I, I said, please don't like roll a bad roll on crafting and destroy it by accident because we do want No, it. I'm not going to touch it yet unless I think I know how to uh... <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because I, I, I have a decent crafting for it, so if, if you want me to do that roll for you, I can. I suggest we take care of one thing at a time. I do need oh. to see your wounds, Torek, if you wish to see them cared for. And <laughs> you think this could kill me? <laughs> uh, Torak is too much of a coward to let me die so soon. I do not mean to pry, but who is this, this Torak? You I thought of? you were Torak. Well, he is Torak. Right? Oh, no, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am curious. I, I do not mean any insult. But the oh, it is no insult. Torak weapons. is the god of the blood red sun. And the one that I shall eventually best. So you're trying to best a god. If they even and exist how, in the first place. How do you propose you do that? You were almost bested by a pirate captain. By glory in battle. Okay, let's move on. There is also another option, though. I don't believe we should take it, but we could tell them if they want their lives spared, since we are leaning towards giving them to the authorities, they could join I got a negative group. one. To what? For, for what? For crafting, oh. to figure out what's okay. going on with this. Please, please tell me what you're doing before you make the roll. <laughs> oh, you told me to make the roll. Well, okay, but you, I thought that got blown off or something. Oh, so, okay. So are you trying to, are you looking at it? Then? Yes. So <laughs> that's a critical <laughs> failure. Oh. So that's not to actually dismantle. That's literally just to examine. Just it, to maybe? look at it. I don't. I don't think Torik understands <laughs> very well. <laughs> just a <laughs> just a slight chance. So uh, Torik looks at it. You think it's um, in fact as you look at it more, you think it's only bolted down by two bolts. Like it's, it looks pretty simple. Torik. Don't I'm gonna, I'm gonna... touch it. Don't <laughs> touch it. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I will smite you. <laughs> and then that god will never have a chance to get you because I will kill you instead. I think I believe her, says Malik. He kind of walks over. Captain, I think we need to uh, figure out what to do with these men. I, speaking as an Azir... What was your second option? You said second option. You got interrupted by a... Can I continue or shall I back oh, away? Sorry. Speak, speak. Very well. What I was going to say as quartermaster of the ship is that uh, as, as an Azirian, we might we would sell the crew into slavery. It seems like in the West here that you all frown upon such things. Hmm. What do you think a bit would be a bigger reward? Selling them as slaves or selling them to authorities for them to hang or do whatever they please with them? Ask a Malik or like everybody. Uh, Malik. Kind of shrugs like, uh, I don't think I've been in the West long enough to really know, but. Uh, no, I. Ah, uh, true. Kadir probably as well. You would know better than we would, you Westerners, I think. Although I've sailed around a little bit, I would say, hmm, I don't know. It's a close call, really. What does, did Orlando go back to the ship or is he still hanging about? He's still, um, um, well, he's at the gunwale, so he's kind of in between both ships, like standing yeah, there. Yeah, I ordered him to stay on our ship. Gotcha, yeah, he, okay. He's there, but he's kind of chimed in a few gotcha, times okay. from over there. <laughs> the other po captured pirates are just remaining quiet, but you could tell they're clearly all listening to what their fate might be. Well, either way, it seems that whether we turn them in or, or we sell them, either way, we still need to bring them with us. It sounds like that is the answer. They come with us, and wh whoever fetches the higher price. Slavery, I am not... I do not know how popular slavery is. I am not a big fan of slavery myself. My people are uh, very much into freedom, but uh, I will not gainsay you if that is what you desire. 
Hmm. It's too bad Blue Feather isn't here. I'm sure he would love to have nine slaves. What is a Blue Feather? Oh, none of your concern, dear. Uh, it's like a code word or something. Perhaps. The, their captain suddenly speaks up. Uh, she, Captain, there is another option that you're forgetting. Oh, pray tell. No. We could all join forces and you have more crew. Experienced pirates, if that's what you want to be. See, the problem with that is the last Crimson Skull that we allowed alive on our ship, what was his name, Scourge? Yeah, hmm. he betrayed us and he's probably dead by now. Torek speaks up and says, uh, <coughs> Pirate. I sold his Scourge. Hmm. So a man uh, named Scourge with a Scourge. So, t- unless you have, uh, unless I have any reason to trust you, which I don't at this point, since you were trying to. Oh, that makes two them. of us. I have a, if we take them with us, whether to sell or to turn in for the reward, there is a possibility perhaps that they earn our trust on the way to our port of call. Oh, that they... is up to you, of course, but oh, perhaps they may, they may buy their freedom with service. Oh, I was going to make them work no matter what. Well, I meant if they are actually trust, become trustworthy and that's well, to you, of course. Um, well, they need to come aboard. We have to figure this out, but yes, they will be working until we make a decision. And I don't know, maybe if you're extra special good, we won't turn you in or kill you in the process. Mm. Can't wait. Are we towing their ship, scuttling it? What are we doing with the ship? Do we need their ship? Is there anything we can use from their ship? <laughs> you start chuckling a little bit. We can take everything from it, but it's a ship. It is worth a good bit of money. That's a lot of labor, wouldn't you do it? Not a very good pirate, are you, milady? Quite new to it, actually. And so it would seem. <laughs> and he kind of coughs a little bit. His wounds are pretty bad. Uh, is there a way to attach the ships so we can sell their ship as well? It's called towing it, aye. We'd be slower, I would imagine, but are we in a rush, really? Just slow you down. Molly kind of now looks at their captain like, will you just shut up? You're not, <laughs> you're not helping yourself. Realistically, he'd want to say, yes, please tell it. We have a chance to get it back in that case. But I- <laughs> the problem is, I think that speed is of the essence. And so having a ship tied to us, another ship tied to us, would be difficult in case some of their pirate friends decide to come after us then we'd not only be chased by more cribs and skulls we'd also have them on board as well we could hide it somewhere and come back for it i actually like that idea well Malik, malik sort of nods it's a pretty good idea. Or we just try to take it to a nearby port, maybe sell it then. Hmm. Another pit stop. Well, How close are we to a port? I, don't, I should probably ask. I should answer that question myself with my navigator ability. Yep. <coughs> Orlando may know too. But... Let's see. I am. Make a lore navigation. Oh, no. would it be a sailing navigation roll? Lore or sailing? Or, yeah, I'm gonna do sailing because that's what I'm actually better at. So. First roll of the night. Thirteen. Technically, I 13. made my DL ten navigator, uh, yep. but that's really like For a major thing. Yeah, major routes. But because major settlement uh, cities are on major routes, that actually succeeds. But are there any major? So, uh, in regards to going south, I guess yes. On our path is what I probably want to look at. So, based on your navigation roll, Kadir, even though you're you know you're getting used to the west here and the coastline of the Western Ocean. You're like, you think like for a long time is mostly the coastland of some wild land called Kimrith. 
and there's very there's not really any real cities there's just all little fishing villages mostly so the closest one you think is as northern is mandos okay uh on an island uh, a, a city known as uh, uh cavello how many days journey would that be so with, like full with... sail probably day and a half and dragging this dragging the other ship behind us would probably be two days three days basically two, two, and, a, two and a half yeah two and a half probably it would be drag the ship with us two and a half three days before we reach a port or we could there are some islands around here we could find a cove a secluded cove tie it up and leave it there and come back for it when we have crew to man both hmm. hard call but I would imagine a ship would sell for many gold, many, many gold. Well, what I'm thinking is selling it would be preferable because then we can buy a better ship if we want to. You could sell both ships and buy a more equipped ship, yes. Exactly. In the meantime, Capitan, could I get the healer if you're... Otherwise, if you're going to kill me, just let me die, I suppose. With your permission, Captain? Unless, uh, Torek, unless you, of course, want something from me, you seem to think my not healing you is fine. And now, uh, I wear before. these wounds as a trophy. Okay. What did you say, Marishka? Sorry? I said all aboard, then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I will direct the, the very injured captain to, you know, onto our ship and have him kind of. Okay. Do you yeah, put him so in chains or anything, or you just 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 no? Kind of, I mean, we've disarmed him, and if he really wants to screw with me, I'll just I'll just freeze him into a block of ice for ice water and throw him into the ocean. Lead him at um, weapon point or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm going to heal him. If you if you don't want healing, then by all means, stay here and die. But I, I'm offering I, healing. Let's die. Die. I'm going to do a crafting roll on, see if we can get it on our ship. The uh, catapult. Hey. Yeah. Okay. See if you can roll better than what Torek rolled. Although actually, I wonder yeah. what, what ship it, would it be better for actually for us to to take their ship and tow our own, or is their ship very damaged from the ice flow? Because it already it's has like, the weapon on it. Iceberg run into it, so. So yeah, uh, so one way to check would be to go down and see if there's any bilge, like if there's any water down below. That's. But Torek, Torek has been down there a few yeah. times. He didn't mention any water, but he probably didn't see any water. So, Torek, uh, make a perception roll on your last journey down there, which was probably your fourth time. <laughs> yeah, also, um, I will, on my final time, as I do have it now, I would like to expend a, uh, <clears throat> while I search, I would like to expend a stamina point for my raider thing, raider talent. Oh, okay. Scan for the quickest item. You've already pulled most, most stuff up, so you might have already overlooked it, but you can try. It's only one stamina point. Okay. Um, that is based off, okay, my perception. Oh, hey, I have a plus one to perception now. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, I'm going to uh, go ahead and take the captain on our ship, unless he okay. assumes wants to die, and I will set him aside and kind of begin doing fresh wound treatment. He uh, goes, over, goes over willingly. There's no trick. He's, he's, he's pretty hurt. He doesn't seem to be faking that much. <laughs> I have rolled perception, not accounting for darkness, etc., and I have expended the stamina point. Dire the darkness. Uh, my result is 19. And you're using Raider down below or specifically? Yeah. Okay. Um, you don't, you scan around, unfortunately, you don't see anything that you haven't already seen from, from a more closer look. So okay. ra Raider is more of a thing you allow you to kind of snatch and grab, you know, look really quickly. All right. Anything for just the generic but searching? Otherwise, yeah, otherwise you do notice that there is some water that is starting to slowly gather at the kind of the fore section of the ship, of the, the under belly and the cargo hold. I call out, it's there's flooding inch, down here. It's we very need... faint, but there's about an inch of water standing down there. We need someone to fix that then, don't we? So we can bring it with us. Is it? Is it? Uh, is this hole large enough for me to cover with my hand? Uh, you haven't really seen the actual hole. You can look for it. Uh, with that I would like to look for just, the hole. You, you just noticed the water. So if you want to look for the actual breach itself, yeah, that would be another. You can roll perception again if you want to spend more time down here. Fourteen. 
All right. You, uh, so Torek, not too bright, but he's getting better at perception, kind of looks around, kind of <laughs> checks the water out. You uh, just about don't find it. And like when you're about to probably give up, you actually do notice that the water is coming between a couple of, couple of the um, uh, overlapping planks. So the ship is built uh, overlapping plank style, which is, you know, good shipbuilding technique. However, it looks like uh, there's just enough of a breach where the water is just is coming in just below the water line. But it's a very small leak. But, you know, even Torek probably knows that it's just going to keep accumulating. I would like, does it look like sticking my thumb in it would do anything? <laughs> Torek, the little Dutch, the little speaking <laughs> boy. Um, I mean, it's not like that, obviously, of a hole, but it's... Uh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Looks like you need something bigger. Oh, uh, like a hand. To fix it. I mean, there's not, so it's, there's not a hole per se. There's obviously, there's a there's some damage to the boarding and the water is just kind of leaking through where the board. Oh, through. okay. It's like a splintered board. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. not like a, like a bullet hole or. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because yeah, the water okay. would come rushing in at that point if it were, yeah. so it's just kind of trickling in. And it's like right at the waterline, only really only a couple inches below, really. And you can tell it's clearly, you know, clearly from the ice flow. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other ship, I'm doing uh, fresh wounds on the captain if it's not too late. And if it is too late, then it'll be long term care. <laughs> uh, no, it's, then you, you check his wounds out. He looks like they're they're not quite scabbing over yet. He could benefit yeah. from some. Quick treatment. So or Twenty-one treatment. on the fresh wounds. Maybe cool. go down with Torek and attempt to fix the hole. Um, Marichka does. Yes. Okay. Since I have a ship's crafting specialty. So as as you go down there, you see him like kind of start <laughs> putting his like pretty massive thumb, <laughs> like trying to. That's an eighteen. Like just like te like carefully trying to press my hand against it in different ways, trying to stop it. <laughs> And as as he Marishka approaches, uh, you, you notice that you kick through some water for starters, Marishka, and then you can see where Torek is looking. There's clearly a leak coming through the the overlapping uh, planking of the hole. Like he's on his knees, bent over. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Torek, please let me show you how to fix this before you make a bigger mess. And then with that crafting roll, I will try to attempt to. Uh, stop the leak. Okay. All right. Just uh, by yourself. Just uh, um, unless Torque wants to give me a plus one for helping me. But sure. I'm really old, so he could, but I, I guess I'm more asking, like, what are you? What tools or what are you using? Anything? Um. If actually, I don't know if I have any tools to fix it. Um, so uh, does Mariska uh, Madison? Does she have any skill levels? She has skill levels in sailing, right? Uh, yes, she has a like actual she has training. A... Um, probably, yeah. Doesn't she also have crafting, shipbuilding crafting? Is that what yeah, you have her using? Yeah, ship crafting specialty. Okay. And her sailing is a total of seven, and okay. she has a captain. And oh, yeah. uh, you know, Reiner. you and know, so lots of ways. So you know that tar and pine is like a for a traditional way to 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 caulk uh, ships. There's other methods too, but that's like the most common. And you do notice, uh, and Torek probably would have noticed too, maybe not, but <laughs> there's a whole barrel of tar that he brought up, probably thinking it was something else. Oh, he already brought it up? <laughs> He's been bringing stuff up. Okay, Torek, get the tar, <laughs> bring it back down. We're fixing this now. I don't know, what I have taken up, do I, do, I, do I understand that tar is used for fixing ships? You may have been planning on taking it to our ship to fix our ship, so you may. Have oh, okay, it. fair. I think you were yeah. basically bringing everything on their ship over to our ship. Is what you were doing. When you're, okay, when you're like, you probably wouldn't know unless you have at least a skill level in sailing. Uh, I, I might. Years. Do I? I don't know. I man. do not. I have. A, I what do not. Have I don't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I. I do as requested. Okay. Oops. I'm trying and to send you. I'm gonna slap it on that sucker. <laughs> and while they're doing that, and I'm healing the uh, the captain, I'm going to, I guess, I'll instruct the other sailors to uh, begin 
uh, like kind of getting the other the other pirates settled and. I don't know if there's a place to keep them. Like, this is a slave ship, yeah. So we actually have we, there's obviously like manacles and chains and things yeah, like the that. ones that you so, guys are in. There are uh, eight they sets were of in, them. Yeah. So theoretically, we could actually have like them chained, chained to the oars, basically. That'll chain all of them, but one one of them. Right. Yeah, I, I say let's do that. That sounds good. So did you get the whisper, Ian? Yeah. Um, and Randall just Facebook yeah, saying he's not going to make it. So. From your from the Raider talent. Oh, okay. So he can't make it. All right. So Randall will not be coming tonight. That's all right. I'll continue to play Malik. After right. I uh, drop off the barrel of tar, and we'll, I guess I'll just watch her patching it for now. Okay. So if you're using the tar, uh, if not, let me know because that's a big old minus five to your craft, crafting shipbuilding roll. Uh, make a crafting. Oh, that was what the um. The oh, the eighteen. Okay. Was. Yeah, that that's an um. So making repairs while at sea, it tends to be a little difficult. But fortunately, this is a somewhat easy repair. So you think that's enough? It takes you about ten minutes, but you think that's enough tar to kind of, you know, at least for now, should be okay. Okay. All right. You don't need dry dock for this necessarily. Yeah. Meaning you have to that's, take the whole ship out of the water. That's, that's good enough for now. Let's bring the tar to our ship in case it doesn't hold and everything else that we need from this ship. And let's be on our merry way. Wait, do we have the catapult? Um, you forgot about the catapult. Not yet. Not yet. Um, should, would that be a crafting role to see how to get it onto our ship? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, you can, yeah, examine it or if All you right. want to literally try to do it, you can make the roll. All right, well. so Marichka is going to do a crafting roll just to see how to properly take it off without destroying it. So okay. they're going to pick up and do that. Engineering or shipbuilding specialty? Or siege uh, weapon specialty? Ship, ships for crafting. Yeah. Uh, so uh, 17. Because it's mounted to the ship, so you could use that bonus. Okay, so you look and, well, Torek didn't say it, but it's more than two bolts involved. <laughs> <laughs> it was really four bolts and they also go all the way through the, the floorboard like it's a little more involved in order to keep it steady. Uh, but it's not rotate, it doesn't rotate or anything fancy. It's just literally kind of bolted down. And then the catapult itself has a, uh, a, a 45 degree uh, turning so radius. So we take those four bolts out? Yeah, that's pretty, much, that's pretty much it, yeah. Okay. Um, but they're bolted I mean, in there good. They're not, like even Torek would have trouble ripping it up. And oh. they would probably rip up half the Foreboarding. Mm. <laughs> the, the fact the, that he can't. The decking, the decking, I guess. Is this what's important? What kind, of, <laughs> what kind of tools would be needed to remove it? Well, or you could probably do it with improvised tools, but if you have carpentry tools or shipbuilding tools, that would definitely help. Yeah. Well, you could probably find improvised ways of tools. I think for now we should keep it on this ship until we have the tools necessary to detach it. What do you think, Torek? Or do you huh. think? As long as it gets to, as long as it gets to be on our ship functionally. Uh, hopefully, at some point. Just not at this moment. After that, Torek will head over towards the captain who is currently being healed i think probably actually done being healed because it only takes 10 minutes you guys were 10 minutes down there so he's been healed by now yeah and kadir has brought the prisoners over with my elite's help um also i'm since all their weapons are like scattered on the deck i'm pretty sure when they dropped it mm -hmm. i'm gonna have some of the crew collect them and then like basically confiscate it to where put them in a room that they don't have access to so Okay. They do not have their weapons at all, unless on, they... on your ship, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, you can put them in. in a room. There's two cabins down below, and then everything else is just cargo holds. Okay. So you you okay. can put them in the captain's cabin, maybe, or the other, the secondary one. Uh, oh, that's Malik's. I'm gonna put them in Malik's. Let him deal with the clutter. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's good. Well, I need to take inventory of them anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. 
I'll check them out. I'll give you a count of how many sabers there are and daggers. And I think there was a crossbow or two also. Cool. So all this is going on. Um, what did you roll for healing arts? 21. Kadir, okay. It does pretty good. You're able to clean his wounds up. He's still staggered technically, but not, but kind of close to not being so. Okay. Well, I will do yeah. a long-term care on him. I'm not going to waste magic on him. So. He didn't have any broken bones or anything, but some of the flesh wounds are pretty deep and some bad bruising because Torek hit him pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's Torek. <sighs> He's standing. It could have been worse because the captain was taking glancing blows mostly. Mm. All right, so Marisha's gonna head on up and long -term I'm gonna do the navigation roll because I think we're ready to go. As long as, well, this I'm assuming that the crew is like attaching the ship and like doing all this during this time. Yeah, if, if that's what you order them to do, they they do so. And the experienced sailors, which are most of them, they 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 know how to do this pretty easily. It's just a, using a lot of roping mostly, cool. tying the ship to her, you know, and get her so. They get that done in like 10 minutes. And Kadir just barely succeeds in long-term care <laughs> on the old captain. Captured. Is there captain any... Uh, yeah, 10. Okay. Yeah, navigation roll coming up. Uh, yeah, so what's what your... Or where are you sailing to? Um, well, you, you mentioned Cavello. That's where we can sell the ship. Okay. First port will come to you, basically. Yeah. But I might need help with navigation because that rolls up. Well, you get a uh, plus four bonus for your crew. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then if Kadir helps, that's another plus one. Yeah. That's the maximum bonus you can acquire. So 14. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Cool. Good. Okay. Oh, and great. are you still hugging the coast or are you going to try to make more for open water? Uh, open water since we're carrying that other ship. Okay. So the first part of the trip from here is, is a little difficult. At first, it's dark, like uh, the sun is set about an hour ago. Uh, there's a little bit of moonlight. Both moons are out, but one moon is only a sliver. What, the other moon is very close to full, and there's at least one of you aboard who definitely can feel that. And so you notice that the general area you're at, you do see frightening silhouettes of islands occasionally off in the distance and occasionally you see one closer than you thought and you're like oh my god let's not hit it so far the 14 holds though on the sailing check <laughs> but you hit it out the water oh wait actually was it a 14 14 yes okay you oh. sail for about an hour <laughs> and oh. you suddenly feel the ship kind of like groan just kind of like mm, and you could tell like it's running it's scraping against something and the crew just kind of freezes like and they all look at each other like what the frick sandbar shoal or it could be an animal mm. <laughs> oh but dear it, it mm. slows you down for a moment Probably and it looks like deer. the ship behind you in tow might have cleared it whatever it was well at least but. have a extra ship in case this one sink. There is if you that. really want to, you can make a sailing or perception hearing roll to see if you can figure out what it was, but it... I'll look and see if I like can it, figure it out. Snags it unsnags about 15 seconds. I don't know if you want to worry about it, but... Ignore that d20. I wanted to do it with the plus one, but Torg oh. will... I, was, here. I will go downstairs and make sure that there's no damage to the bottom, like, inside of our ship. Like, there's no leaking in our ship. Marichka explodes a 20. For for uh, checking what that was, so you get uh, to roll again and add. Yeah, yeah. Medicine. Oh, everyone always forgets to roll compounded. 20. Well, not compounded. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Whoa, whoa, hold Torek on, hold got on. a twenty. Okay. What happened? Hold on, have a cat emergency. Just a second. Oh boy. <laughs> Here we go. 
a lovely weather we're having. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <clears throat> hmm. Let's see how well this crew behaves on our way. The captain is still very fairly injured. He's still staggered at least. So. Yeah. By the way, there's most definitely a valuable possession that this captain has that we don't know about, that Torque knows about, that you two don't know about. Oh, okay. I don't, I, I'm still trying to process how Torque would react to this and if he would even notice the captain hiding it. Because he's noticed. If, if it's, I don't know how I would have missed it since I was basically caring for his wounds. Um, because he hit it. Oh, so he's not carrying it. It's somewhere on the board. It's on the ship somewhere, you mean? Uh, it's on his person. Oh, that's odd that but, I didn't see it, but okay. Bill, you're not going to be taking his shoes off or taking his pants off. Yeah. But that can neither are you. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, apparent, apparently due to the Raider tell it, that's something that I saw happen. I don't know what, what Torque's going to do with that information, though. Okay. Well, that, just do what sister would do. I mean... Sorry about that. No worries. Is cat okay? Everything's okay. Yeah, I think the, one of the cats like drug a lamp down and like shattered and the cat freaked out. and <laughs> She's uh, okay. The lamp is uh, more damaged than the cat, which is good. I should hope so. If the cat is more damaged to the lamp and the lamp is shattered, that's a very bad thing. Well, and if the cat was damaged, I would be stopping the uh, game right now. Yes, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's okay. It's an old lamp, so. Okay, so where were we? Sorry. Audience and players. Well, Mariska had rolled a 39 to figure out what happened, Ooh. and then... And Torek has rolled a 20. And a 20. <laughs> they both know, or does Torek know? Actually, that's exactly enough. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. 20, so unfortunately, Mariska doesn't... Uh, all right, let's do one at a time here. So, all right, so the first thing is the groaning sound you heard was a, uh, a shallow, was a shoal. So you okay. might have been closer to like a, a low, an, a tidal island that was just under boat. Um, and then Kadir goes down to see if, um, and Torek and Marichka both, they're pretty sure that's what it was. You don't think it was a creature, pretty sure it was a, Marichka's definitely sure it was a, a, a shallow. Kadir goes down, perception 12. Um, for damage, don't see if it's don't any... notice any yeah. leaking or any uh, other obvious okay. damage yet. I mean, it's only been like a minute or two. But... Yeah, but there's obviously no water gushing through. So that's, you know, that was yeah, the obvious. Yeah, definitely so. no gushing. And if you want to stay longer to see if there's a little trickle, uh, you don't see anything. I'll check again before I before I retire for the night to see if it's, if it's sprung up, basically. So That was basically a failing by one event. <laughs> <laughs> okay so probably some cosmetic damage but probably no actual damage and uh, we keep going and you keep going all right we keep going a minor complication really you might have lost a half mile or you know or time or something Bork might have to get out and start pushing or swimming but it's good yeah <laughs> so let's see your sailing speed you're being in towed and you guys are just going by when, right? Nobody at the oars. Um, we, we, we could have the pirates rowing. <laughs> Tor could be rowing. We, we put them to row. Okay. Oh, we and made you, and you chain them also, right? Yeah, we chain them. No. Tackled. Wait, do we? I, yeah. I, I, while you guys are doing that, that's what I was instructing them to do, so that way they're, they're contained. Yes, they are trained. I don't trust them. Oh, boy. They are prisoners. All right, all we need now is a... Uh, is someone up front with a whip, with a, with a rough leather whip, and we're good you to sold restart. that. So <laughs> they they uh they go along with it. There's no fighting back. In fact, they're actually quite resolved to the fact they'll be. We're not treating the them poorly. I mean, so yeah, and actually, I will actually I, I will go around. Fairly uh, civil for pirates. I will go around to all of them and make sure that anyone with wounds has long term care. Well, I guess as my I also want to make sure Torque is covered in that. So Torque and the captain are two of them. And then if any of the other pirates have wounds, because I don't think any of our people took damage other than Torek. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. There was the demon attack. That, yeah, I know that was, but that was their uh, ship, not ours. About, about I'm people. saying, but so I'm, I'm gonna first. I go to Torek oh, for our recruit. Or, Orlando yeah. still has old wounds recovering, but he has. Oh yeah, so he's he's the third first for long term he, care. He's one of your patients right now. Yeah, yeah, and I can do four, I believe. Yep. Okay. All right. So Torek. I will find the worst of them. Torek will, in fact, reject any offers for uh, fresh wounds, but long-term, he will not. 
All right, well, I will, well beyond fresh woods at this point. Yeah, anyway. I will okay. do. I will do long term care on Torek. Hopefully, this works. <laughs> so Torek will allow. You have a plus two. Remember. Oh, okay. That's a. Uh, that would be an eleven. So that succeeds poorly. thanks to him being having quick healer. Yes. So. Woo. <laughs> All right, so you now have long-term care on you. The captain has long-term care. Orlando has long-term care. And I will find the most wounded of the pirates and perform long-term care on him as well. Torek okay. will find any of the pirates, if any of them are uh, like open to it, and will attempt to initiate conversation with them. And will bring a cask of, or a cask of his old cask of wine with him to share with him. Okay. If, if For, they if they seem up to it. Before we get to that, Madison was saying, "What what were you asking?" Oh, you I were saying something. That me and Connor are are steering the ship, just making sure okay. it's, everything's going fine. Yeah, well, so you're you're at the tiller. He's probably up in the crow's nest, unless you're telling him otherwise. Kind of keeping watch because yeah. mm -hmm. uh, there's not there's a decent amount of moonlight, but it's kind of cloudy tonight. Mm -hmm. And then Torek, you bring up a cask of the. Uh, uh, somewhat watered, but otherwise halfway decent wine. And uh, you, the crew, they're pretty quiet, but they start to kind of um, He, he just wants to exchange stories with them. I mean, they're what? kind of quiet and resolved, and you're not super magnetic, but eventually they get, some of them get kind of like intimidated, the fact that you're kind of standing there, and they kind of like, oh, uh, yeah, well, I uh, start talking a little bit, and Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Most of them if they don't like quiet, you, intimidate them into liking you. Most are so quiet and completely, you know, they're obviously they're worried about their fate, probably. Uh, but there's a couple guys that are kicking it up, and you, and one of the one of the crew of them, if it matters, because I think Kadir this answers Kadir's question, uh, is also heavily wounded. It was almost as bad as the captain. That looks like to be wounds. Uh, the wounds are jagged, like they were caused by like icy claws or something. Mm. Unfortunately, I failed that long-term check on him, yeah. uh, but I can always look in the morning. Uh, okay. So. He just kind of uh, nods to you as if. I just uh, I bandaged him up at least. Uh, he may not do anything, but he is bandaged. I'll bandage everybody. They're just not long-term cared. So I will at least clean wounds and things. Of that at nature. least do what you can. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you I'll, don't necessarily know that you didn't succeed. Anyway, yeah, but so. basically, I'm like cleaning everybody's wounds, making sure nothing's going to get infected. Things of that nature. I'm trying to okay. stave off any any uh, gangrene and the like. So cool. Okay. Um, While I'm driving the show, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, Torek, uh, if you want to risk it, if you're really trying to perform for these guys, you can make a performance check. <laughs> um, I don't think it, I'll pass. Like if you're storytelling or anything. <laughs> Okay. I have a minus four to performance. Yeah. <laughs> that is my worst skill. I will pass. <clears throat> okay. I'd rather intimidate them into telling me stories. <laughs> tell me story or die. <laughs> you rather you rather them tell perform, right? <laughs> yeah. Dance monkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although he will also tell stories and such as well, but not in an attempt to do performance, just his his typical after battle joviality joviality that's a word yeah, right i think it's a word okay we can call yeah. it that sure i mean we know what you meant so yeah marie like go off driving the um driving <laughs> steering the chair <Yeah. laughs> um, um she's i'm gonna roll language to see if i can figure out what the book and scrolls are about because she's okay. already figured out the map is a treasure map yeah Rithia. the new ones would that be a deciphering bonus would deciphering add to that mm -hmm. i thought the book was in code if i'm not mistaken. it's definitely it's definitely coded so deciphering definitely will come into play MC2. nice oh cool so it takes you about another hour but you're able to I encode some more of it, not all of it, because it's this is this task would be more like an eight-hour task. But you uncover more of it. You're starting to figure out the cipher. You're like, oh, okay, every seventh letter is actually a Brithian rune, and then it looks like every third word is transposed. You're starting to catch on some patterns, and um, it starts talking about uh, an ancient 
treasure on some Pridonian island known as Mierga. But apparently this ship was trying to... So it almost seems like it's half journal, like half captain's journal, half like some other obscure lore. Could I make a lore roll to see if I could figure out more details about that? Yeah, or... so if you've heard of Mierga or any treasure that's there or something. Mierga. Probably didn't spell that correct in my notes. M I U R G A. Yeah. Mierga. This is the lore. That sucked. It's a nine. Well, you've never even heard of this island until now. Okay. And what about the scrolls? Are they all related to this? Uh, oh, the scrolls look like something different. Um, one is completely blank for starters, which is really real, weird because it was actually sealed in the scroll case, and then it's like blank. <laughs> and then there's another one that you open, and it looks like it has a bunch of uh, illuminations. So, you know, kind of a medieval term for colored pictures. Um, it looks like it's a lot of heraldry, see a lot of different heraldic devices. Um, and it looks like it's mostly to deal with some of the nobility of Brithia and some in Western Eridorn. So, yeah. In fact, one of the symbols looks to be uh, a flag that you a banner that you saw in Firthport. Mm, yeah. uh, does that would I recognize that belongs to the um, queen since there was um, there was a drawing that I like drew. It was like yeah. this. Oh, well, then in that case, you see two. There's one that you represents the all of Brithia, basically the queen's household, okay. which is uh, blue and gold with a, a gold ship with two crossed swords above it. Mm -hmm. It's blue and gold colors. And then there's another one you remember you saw at Firthport too. So it might be some local lord whoever the ruler of fifth port itself was okay think. so basically they got this scroll from where we were just at then possibly it could be i mean there's a there's several coastal ports in brithia okay corrington is the main one that's the capital can i do a magical arts roll on the scroll just to see if there's anything up with it yeah Okay. Touch it, I guess. So in other, doing it as in to detect magic? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So if you're what? touching it, does it cost you stamina point and the deal's only 10? Um, okay. And you kind of run your fingers over it, focusing on what you know about magic and you do sense a faint magical aura. You sense okay. um, shadow magic. Oh, dang. Not gonna know anything about that then. But Matt, Matt thought I was going to say fire magic. I was thinking that was initially, because <laughs> I know that one spell. I don't. I don't personally know that one oh, spell. But. Oh, I know what I know what spell. I think you're talking about too. Yeah. Marishka wouldn't know it. Yeah, and neither, neither would uh, Kadir, fire script. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fire script. Yeah. Unless it's moon script. Ooh. There's would she have thing. the knowledge to know about moon scripts? <laughs> uh, based on your. Well, that'd probably be another role, either lore or magical arts. Your highest magical arts. Okay. Actually, yeah. no, specifically magical arts, shadow. Oh, specifically shadow? Uh, okay, well, I can try. Or lore. Or lore. Okay, then I'm going to go with lore then, because I'm a little bit higher on that one. Yes, I have no training in shadow. Ooh, 18. You have heard, um, you've actually heard of the spell fire script, even though you don't know it, but you've heard there's some variations like moon script, uh, e even a story about uh, sun script, it's like the script always shows up like if it's exposed to sunlight. The moon script one is exposed to moonlight, but it's usually supposed to be during a full moon or very close to being a full moon, which the greater moon actually almost is. It almost is. Yeah. Can and you've I, even heard uh, an obscure story about uh, a type of hidden code that's like water that you have to uh, submerge it in water and then the writing shows up. Okay. Can I lift <laughs> it up to the moon since it's pretty close to the full moon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you undo it, put it up there. Yep. No, nothing happens. <laughs> All right. How, how long do you want to do it? <laughs> I mean, how... Yeah. 
does it take a while to, <laughs> for anything well, to happen? You've heard that fire script sometimes takes 30 heartbeats to 60 heartbeats to appear. Well, oh, then I hold, I hold it up for as long as the arm <laughs> okay. can. You hold, it, you hold it for about, you figure it's about 60 heartbeats, you know, a minute. And yep. suddenly the script starts to appear. That was otherwise hidden Ooh. in the game. Okay. Yeah, and it's a whole scroll, uh, about a four foot scroll worth of this hidden runic writing. Nice. All right, can I, can I like over the top of it, write it down? Or maybe, no wait, maybe I shouldn't touch it. <laughs> wait, let me think, <laughs> let me think. Um, in a separate, because I still have that other captain's journal. If it, there's a blank page anywhere, I'm going to start writing down what it says on that. Okay. Uh, so I can translate it later. See okay. if I can figure it out. All right. Um, should I? Can I make a language roll on it? I was going to ask you to do it anyway because as you start doing this, uh, you get about halfway through, and you start and you notice the top part of the scroll starts to fade very quickly. Okay. And so okay. you might need to roll to write it down as fast as you can. No. Oh, I not a roll. Uh, I want. <laughs> did I lock it? Ooh, you could, I mean, if you if you were to ask Kadir, I would tell you something you could do, but I don't know anything about this. So. Kadir, help me! <laughs> Kadir! Kadir, help! I need a sweater on deck! <laughs> I mean, you could just do it on deck, and then you're in the moonlight. <laughs> if you call him for him, by the time he gets there, it's like... Oh, 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 okay. Um, well then, you summon I... me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Well, wait. Once it disappears, is it gone for good? Um, based on the wait. Oh, did I lose you guys? Nope. Okay, because the internet just blipped for like three seconds. That was weird. Uh, so based on your lore roll or your magical arts roll about that kind of magic. Um, yeah, you're pretty sure. Usually, it, supposedly, once it appears, it's it's gone. It only stays for a. Because the point okay. is, so it doesn't get captured by enemies or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna use a luck on it to reroll. <laughs> luck to reroll heart, 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 heart. I think a luck to reroll language may have happened twice in the history of Savage Kingdoms. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, but that I, just goes to show you that's one of those skills that doesn't come up much, but when it does, it's usually kind of major. Wait, it would be a, it's a deciphering, so it would be it. My role would have taken well, no, this, this time it's a writing. Okay, remember you're trying to write fast and legible. <laughs> okay, well, now I'm just trying to read it though. I mean, like, she could also write in shorthand. Oh, okay, you're doing it to try to read. Okay, yeah, I'm trying oh, to so read. I thought you were trying to oh. copy first. Yeah, once so, it was started disappearing, I, I gave up trying to write it. Okay, so you stop there, you try to kind of scan really quickly. So what was the roll? I kind of got lost in all um, the numbers. Eight. Well, it was an eight, an eight, but I'm going to luck it if that's not high enough, which I'm pretty sure it won't be. No. <laughs> so. Luck that, it, luck it. That would be deciphering. So let's, okay, 24. Woo, that works. 24, <laughs> nice. That's so much better. Oh yeah, no, it's very good. You you pretty much figured the whole, the whole thing out oh, in, okay. in that moment. So as the moon runes kind of glow, you start to look at it. And the cool thing about the moon writing is that it's it's fairly actually. What languages do you actually know? Like without, like that you're um, actually. Um, Malovian, Nether Speech, Norish, and Brickian. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so uh, this was actually uh, in Norish, weirdly enough. Okay. So it's uh, very very rune based. Uh, the Norish people usually carve in stone and wood for languages but you know some of the some of the higher known people will can write will write stuff on paper as well um but yeah it's a whole thing about let me see hold on really quick oh, i forgot what this is about it's norish um it doesn't look to be a spell or anything but it talks about um <laughs> This would make a great for. It looks like it's a uh, a story about someone named Valric Redbeard, who was a Norish uh, pirate raider, and it's written in verse and song. So it seems to be probably an actual saga that could be sung and performed, and there might even be some quasi magical 
effect to it. Okay. Well, um, Marisha's just gonna like dial through the seashell to Blue Star, be like, hey, <laughs> got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you throw it about 200, yard, 200 miles. For natural attack, <laughs> my other character. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it looks like it's probably a quasi-magical saga. It's all it's written in verse and uh, it has a meter to it, kind of. Okay. Well, it's a very kind of Norse kind of meter to it. All right. Well, maybe she'll try performing it someday. See what happens. Okay, it may be valuable too if you sell it to an Emerald Harper or someone. But but it's blank now, so. Yeah, I mean, can I, can I write the re can I write what I saw down? That way, I got it. Yeah, do you have keen memory by any chance? Is it no. talent? No, okay. You could try to write it from memory if you want. Yeah, well, it was just a second ago, so like, yeah. I can yeah. just. So it'd be language, since it is based on intellect. Oh, this would definitely goodness. be an intellect thing. Okay. Oh my goodness. All this, what's up with these crappy rolls? They're either really great or really bad. Well, yeah, you I only had bad. You get about halfway through and you're like, oh God, I can't remember. Did he, did he let the person go or not? Was it, was it, was it a narwhal or was it a dolphin? I, well, I can't remember. Well, <laughs> that luck was unwisely spent, but okay. And you can't We're remember off. the, yeah. So you're down to what, four luck? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I thought it could be important. That's <laughs> no, yeah, it could be. It could be cool. Actually, I'm going to look to spell it real quick. It might have lasted longer, but I think it's only a minute. Uh, it says one minute's time. Yeah. It does say one minute according to fire script. Sorry, I had the core rule book to the side while I was Sorry, eating pizza. It's one I already had it open. It's one minute for fire script. Oh, it is one. That's what yep. I thought. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't last that long. I mean, it could be a rare one where you where you put it back to the moon tomorrow night and it reappears, but we never heard of such a thing. Well, oh, <laughs> I have half a song. If only you had keen memory. <laughs> Oh well. Wow. Wonder if Malik does. So I know. The other... this is something that oh, yeah, Malik done. Uh, I don't think he does. Uh -huh. Be a good one for a bard, though. Yep. But you just still have the other book and the other scroll. Mm -hmm. You already looked at those, so the book you still have more to translate. Yeah. Um, and also, oh, based on the other roll too, uh, when you were looking at the book. You could tell the last 10 pages are blank. So maybe they haven't been entered yet, or maybe there's something with them, but. All right. Well, nothing else I can do with that. Cool, okay. Moving onward. And Torek's still <laughs> trying to entertain the crew or have them entertain him. Uh, one thing that happens about an hour, so this is about the time that uh, that uh, Marichka was kind of messing with the holding the scroll out to the moonlight. And um, Torek, you notice the crew, whether it was you getting them to do it or maybe they're just some one of them just started, they start kind of singing a little bit, like two start singing, then a third, and then a fourth. And it's kind of like a kind of a dark sort of chant. Is this pieces. our crew or the pirate it's, captured pirate it's, it's, crew? It's almost like imagine yo ho a ball of rum and in a soft kind of dirge. No, it's it's them, the captured crew. Okay. Does Torek know this song? Mm, lore or sailing? Roll if you want. Uh, would military apply? Yeah. Yes, actually. Lovely. Ten. Exactly what okay. You've Let's actually, you've actually <laughs> yeah. so you've actually heard this probably one time before. And I will was, sing uh, along any, any lyrics to remember. Other okay. than that, I'll just keep enjoying this this tune as we work our way through the open sea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of go back before. And you know and you know one purpose of it is that kind it sets a, a rhythm for rowing. If you do it in the proper tempo, 
So you see, they just kind of like sing together and they start getting really loud as if they're kind of like almost supporting each other through this song. They're just kind of, oh, oh, yo, oh, oh, oh. it's not actually that song, but it kind of goes sort of like that. A slaver's life for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're really bad eggs. <laughs> So, um, Kadir is going, once everyone's kind of settled and wounds are looked at, I will go to the captain's quarters and knock on her door. I think she's I up at the I'm, I'm previously tiller. there. <laughs> oh, I thought you were doing she's this. She's up at the raised deck, no, I'm, I believe. I'm, I'm doing the she, ship right she's now. She's at the steering oar. Oh, I thought factory. you were doing this moon thing, the moon thing, like, downstairs for some reason. That's why, uh, uh, you know, moonlight uh, down there. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, she had a, like a porthole or something in her in her room. That's what I was thinking anyway. That's what I was kind of picturing. But anyway, and I will go over to the captain and um, uh, I we will need to have watches, I'm sure, and keep watch on our new prisoners as well. Uh, I know Torque refuses to acknowledge that he is mortal and needs rest, but his wounds will not heal if he does not take a break. Nice or you have convinced the Toric. I don't know. If, was that out loud? Or? That was that was just talking to to Marichka about about oh, you. Oh, okay. Because you're down okay. there singing with the pirates. So then he will continue <laughs> singing. <laughs> I can convince him to let you treat him. I mean, I am the captain. I could just order him. Well, you have treated him long term. I have bandaged his wounds. Yes, but. So he strains himself further without being able to keep an eye on things. He will need to rest at some point, as will I, actually. So, mm -hmm. actually, I think I wasn't. I thought for some reason I was resting when this whole pirate oh, started chasing us. Oh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I kind of remember. That's that, right. Too. Yeah. So, um, you would have gotten two hours of sleep or rest, and I think that's why I had eight stamina. <laughs> yeah. I was low. Um, <laughs> and it's been like two more hours ever since yeah. if you need to track it before a long sleep or whatever. Well, I will take the first watch. You and Torek rest. And Malik will stay up as well. Yeah, I'll, st I'll stay on the first watch. That's what I usually be doing. Okay. So <clears throat> we'll go and find a quieter place to to rest. Cool. Okay. Malik's cabin's open, but you know he'll be down there eventually after his watch. Um, so Torek continues to sing. So Torek, they they kind of carry on for about an hour, hour and a half, and then they start falling off, being tired, or, or hungry, or wounded, or all three. Uh, but they continue at the the oars. Um, they're pretty good about it. Occasionally, they you know you'll see somebody stop oaring for a rowing for a moment, but they usually uh, get back to it if you glare at them long enough. And <laughs> so they are adding extra speed to you guys, believe it or not, at least the direction that you're steering the ship. And let's see, the rest of the night, for the most part, is kind of normal. Uh, we'll double check the weather and encounters. Cool, okay. The rest of the night is very quiet after that near miss with the uh, shallow island and reading the moon script and everything. So 50, let's see, going, had your ship speed figured out? I lost it. Uh, average five knots an hour, so 10 hours, 50 miles. Uh, okay, it's about right there. So when uh, sun up the next day, when you uh, like come aboard, whenever your next watch is, or maybe it's even earlier, uh, you can tell. So around dawn, you can see um, mostly open water around you, uh, but you can probably tell the, the day is uh, fairly clear, actually. The drawback is there's not a lot of wind, so the ship is definitely going slower and the wind's kind of blowing is a it's kind of a north northeasterly so it's almost kind of blowing against you so you're going a little slow now but the good news is the, the weather's clear and you can it's clear enough to just make out land uh, straight ahead it's hard to tell if it's islands or mainlands based on K Kadir's navigation he thinks those are probably islands is that so we'll need to go 
to uh, you know steer to to a uh, port um to get away from the islands so we can we don't want to go between them because it's more treacherous that way well steerboard is right so if you want to go out to open water to oh, go yeah i think it's sorry that's right starboard i was for some reason i was yeah <laughs> reverse yeah I, I don't know why i thought port was right i i know it's not, <laughs> it's, it's the starboard right port left yeah so yeah hard to starboard and if you look at your ship, the, the steering board is literally on the right side. Yeah. So, <laughs> I even put it right. Yeah, if, did you ever watch the show Vikings? I loved it. But apparently a couple of the ships had the steering wheel on the wrong side. And like viewers are like, what the hell? <laughs> it's, historically, why are they on the port side? And then, but the writers wrote back, this is kind of cool. Uh, they said they knew that, which I believe because they did all this research. But the, because the camera was in a certain position, they had to move the oar to the port side and they were hoping mm. nobody would notice, but of course people did. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. <laughs> interesting. Mm. But, I, but I, if you look at the episode, I'm like, yeah, that's true. They, they totally had the camera mounted in that one area and they probably had to move the, uh, the steering wheel. So uh, you start taking her out to sea. So this will be another sailing role to, to, to do the next days of... Uh, Navigation. Well, am I on watch? Am I basically? Are you sleeping now, Marishka? I should take this, or do you want me to? Uh, or you want to do it? Everyone have... has the elder stamina back by now. Okay. I have a plus seven. Yeah, you have higher higher. Than have I? I do, so. have, have I? Have we healed at all from long term? Yeah, have a long term satir torque. You would heal your ridiculous healing rate, which is what yeah. six. Um, yeah. Would I one, be able one to plus vigor plus two? No, it's seven. Back. Seven. <laughs> Because quick healer, one yeah. plus vigor is five plus two. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I, Madison? No. Are I able to do navigation since Marichka is about to go to sleep? Yeah, you let Kadir take over for the setting the course? Well, I have the higher uh, modifier for the roll, so I'm just wondering, can I roll, but he would be up? Or is that? Oh, you, you could do it and just tell him what your plan is, you know? Okay. All right. We're going to sail around the island. Four for the crew, correct? Yes. And five, one more from me, so a total of five. Yeah. All right. Let's see. 25. Ooh, nice. nice. You find a new continent. Off nice. <laughs> We're heading there. <laughs> <laughs> for the 25, you find a, night, uh, a new continent. Uh, they share corn with you, and the year is fourteen. Um, this will make a really good spice trading route. Yeah, you find it totally. You've now found the first spice road in Savage Kingdoms. Not sure if there's more than that. So you go. Oh, it's per day, not per twelve hours. Yes. Wait, it doesn't. Ah, uh, it doesn't is... count. No, uh, -term healing. No. Long term quick healer gives you plus two health healed, healed per day, not per not, not per twelve hours. So in essence, you could say you get yeah. plus one per long term care. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it would be six. Okay. So you hear it's six every six every twelve, 12 hours. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was whispering that so you wouldn't like you know disrupt the screen, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said six, but then I, I was like, well, maybe it is seven. All right, so the day uh, continues on. It's kind of a clear day, not much wind. So if you if you got the enemy pirates still oaring, it definitely uh, comes into even more play than it did last night. I mean, as long as they get their rest too. We can switch them out for the, our, other, our own crew. I mean, we won't obviously chain them there, but. Okay, so you yeah. do treat them. Otherwise they would be fatigued right now. Actually, they would be beyond fatigue, almost exhausted. Well, we don't really yeah. sell it. If they're going to be selling them, they're not going to do any good to us with half dead. We won't get a good price for them. <clears throat> would be my argument if we are selling them. So. Yeah, let's give them a rest. Okay. Switch them out with a regular crew. Yeah. Keep an eye on them. You have their weapons yeah. that are taken away, right? So they yeah. can't yeah. really... All of their weapons are taken away. Unless some guy is like an awesome brawler. They're probably not going to do too much if they were too... <laughs> Oh, Mutiny. please do try. I haven't used any of my combat spells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Torek, Torek's waiting too, probably. <laughs> oh, look, they escaped. Oh, no, whatever do we do? <laughs> I'm getting deja vu. 
So you sail a little bit longer. The whole morning passes. You get till noon, uh, until noon, and you could you occasionally make a. You you can see a signature off to to uh, port side, which is left if you're going forward, and. Um, both Marichka and Kadir are pretty sure these are still the same islands. You're just kind of on the further side. There's a whole group of them. And you're pretty sure this is off the coast of uh, like s southern central Kimrith that you are now. You're actually more like here. I moved you ahead too much. All right. And um, the second half of the day will go also. Nope. Not uneventfully. With a 25? That well, there's also, roll. yeah, that's, yeah. So a 25 will get rid of any hazards that you might cast or catch, but it not, this doesn't gotcha. guarantee that you don't meet another ship or a creature. Gotcha. Okay. But you have managed to escape any hazards if there were any like shoals or tidal, yeah. you know, all the weird ship stuff. Cool. So ice, ice, random ice flows out of nowhere. Wow. That kind of thing. Kadir, what are you doing? I made them behind us, not in front of us. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry, I failed this time. I rolled a one and it appeared and no, never mind. Yeah, I, I, I surrounded our ship with ice, so now we can walk around it. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that I'm Rathkiri. I am not comfortable. Oh boy. You're still in a temperate area. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, interesting. Cool. Not okay. a good sign. <laughs> Maybe. It's kind of. Well, I don't want. I won't say too much. Okay. Um, wow. Interesting. interesting. Would they be <laughs> I hope it's not in the funk again. <laughs> <laughs> Another funk. I'm tired of the um, funk. <laughs> <laughs> I really need Blue Star in this campaign now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so about um, mid afternoon, so about two or three hours after noon, uh, everything's kind of the same. The weather's still clear. It's starting to get a little cloudy, but not quite as bad. But it, that's way off to the east. Um, you see skies darkening way off to the east, but it's way far away. You're not going that way. But speaking, um, but you notice. Um, Hmm. Who's on deck at this point? What in mid afternoon? I'll let you guys totally imagine. If you most of us would here. be, unless I mean, probably. Yeah, I would say probably all of you, unless yeah. somebody's specifically doing something below deck, like managing the cargo or. That's my league's job. <laughs> so yeah, so he's probably down there. So everybody uh, aboard above deck, which sounds like all of you, uh, make perception rolls. There's also someone in the crow's nest too. So if you guys fail, they will probably see it. Brenna's up there. The, the the woman she pirate she likes to get up here a lot. Another crappy roll from Kadir. <laughs> <laughs> Kadir does not notice. Uh, Kadir has not had good rolls. He's uh, too busy worried about Jadishma. Yes. About his fate. Yes, he it cannot is, escape. It is fate that I have not seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Marichka notices. Ian, do you want to roll for Torek? Uh, Fate has blinded my eyes. Sure. Don't have to, but depends on what he's doing. Any special any specialties that might apply here? Sight or C. <laughs> okay. I took the aboard ship specialty. Or aboard ship. I did not. <laughs> it's my from my mariner. Yeah, Pardon. mariner town. Oh, Torque is. I don't. I don't think I succeed. Tork is not an out. No, you didn't quite fail, but you're just kind of like in your thoughts or whatever you're doing. Maybe you're sharpening a weapon or an axe or something. Marichka, though, Marichka notices, and, and apparently the, the girl in the crow's nest, she doesn't really say anything. Is it, maybe it's not worth the alarm, but she is looking that way. And what she's looking at, Marichka, is you see off to your, uh, to your starboard side, which is right, if you're you know, going forward. Uh, in other words, to the west, you can see a, uh, a lone ship. Um, so even in more open water, really far off, I mean, like a league away, which is like, a, you know, three miles. You just make out its silhouette. It's an interesting looking ship. It's kind of, um, even though it's far away, it's, uh, it's silhouettes, very kind of unique looking. 
maybe a Prydonian vessel, maybe, I don't know. It's kind of weird. But it's uh, just a lone ship kind of sailing way out into the open water. Um, My lady captain, do you see that? Yes, I do. She calls down. It's way or far it out up. there. It doesn't seem to be in any shipping lanes, but I don't know. Whatever. Doesn't mean much. Yeah, Torque Tork would notice now if they're talking in Kadir. But it's way <laughs> out there. Does it seem to be ha does it seem to be on a course of any kind? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the shipping lanes quite as well as I should, but most people don't sell quite that far out to deep water, but I don't suppose it's entirely unusual. Maybe it's a Norish longship, but um, or maybe a Pridonian vessel. She doesn't look Brithian or his mom, Liam. It's difficult to tell. Hmm. Well, even if it is something, we are carrying another ship. We don't really aren't in a position really to make use of any information. Well, the other crewman suddenly just kind of snipes up, trying to be all cool. Like a, he's like, well, or we could add a third ship to our string of ships, eh? That's right. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> nobody really gets behind him. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Torek, Torek raises his hand uh, almost, like stops halfway as soon as he notices no one else is doing it. <laughs> Like, like he's like hell yeah, but cuts himself short. Like, ah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> works all for the pillaging. Mm. Merch I, don't is. Know, I don't know if we should go near it. <laughs> Do we become a nautical tyrant or not? It's a simple question, really. Um, I mean, there's not much to think about. Totally, no consequences of such a thing. Ooh, ooh, can I, um, I don't know if I can do it at this distance. Can I see, uh, can I uh, do a magical arts roll? See if there's uh, anything. Oh, that's way too far. <laughs> that is way too Three hard. miles. <laughs> I am fencing magic. It's only, uh, yeah, it's only five yards. It's only a five yard range. Yeah. I sense a disturbance in the forest somewhere <laughs> across the universe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and all. Do you guys think we should go towards it? I think we should let it be because we already have one ship and some captives to deal with. We have no idea how they're armed. We have no idea what they're carrying. That's and true. We are not pirates. We took yeah. uh, we took revenge on the pirates who attacked us. Mm. Nor are we privateers. Yeah. Does anyone have second sight by any chance? Uh, no. no, no, okay, nope. <clears throat> More concerned because the, the GM said <laughs> interesting, so it must be interesting. Yeah, it's interesting, <laughs> but is it good or bad or neither? But yeah, it's uh, Fortunately, it doesn't really tell us much. by now that as uh, well, it's a, a little bit more information. The longer you watch her, she's moving pretty swift, like this ship is like. Yeah, we fast. couldn't catch her if we wanted to. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably not. Maybe without the ship in tow, maybe, but it's it's going pretty. It's a sleek vessel. It looks. Um, the more you look at it, the more unusual. It's hard to place her nationality. Does it look better than ours? Really far away, but I mean, she's moving fast, so there's that. It's definitely probably a little faster than yours. Mm. Or they're they're catching all that northerly wind as well because the wind is blowing. They're headed north. Um, okay, so Kadir said no. What does Torek think? <laughs> Just trying to get opinions. Torek has fallen asleep. Torek <laughs> is thinking. I think Torek is kind of interested in doing that, but <laughs> yeah. Well, it are we a day away from uh, the port we were trying to get to? We should be about now, yeah. Yeah, you think you're yeah, probably just a day. Uh -huh. Occasionally, Orlando comes up and looks at the coastline, too, but he still seems kind of lost. But occasionally, he does say, any day now, I think we're getting closer. And that's like all he that's about really it. Does. Okay. <laughs> he's still trying. Oh, by the way, at this point, I think he's now non-staggered. Yay! 
I, en I enjoy battle. If you wish it, you will have my axe. Well, I don't know if we would even be doing battle. Though if... Like... Just throw Torque onto it and have him rip up the floorboards. We have to catch it first. If we cannot catch it, there is... Um... Yeah, if we, what you know we what? All, what are we all looking at? Uh, just, <laughs> a ship. just a ship. It looks weird. It's it got a stretchy. Weird. He just like stares off that way. Yeah, I could ghost see pirate it. ship. It looks like it moves very fast. Full of skill. Oh, it's a black pearl. Okay, I see. Yeah, we are not fast right now. Yeah, we, we carry. With well, it could always chase us. Then it would be our problem. It's a beautiful if ship, us, us, so fight back, but if if they back. chase us, I'll be their problem. What are we thinking about attacking the ship? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no, no, we got to get you back to Osmondos. Let's keep going. I promise you, I will reward you greatly. If, uh, yes, you keep saying that. And uh, I keep saying day. it because it is true. <laughs> I have no way to I prove it until we're going to sell us all for slaves. <laughs> I'm losing more hope in you, that's all. I'm a very impatient <laughs> woman. So I have noticed. No, it, it will be fine. But we have to travel inland. Uh, Ivaro, the city that I am from, is, uh, it is far inland. It is not on the coast of Ismondos. It is perhaps, uh, I don't know, 80 miles inland, maybe 100. Ugh, more oh. traveling. Oh, that's like five days travel, travel right? 80 miles. Um, 20 miles per day. Yeah, I mean by foot, yeah. On open okay. terrain. Horseback is definitely, it will be faster. Unless you just book it, uh, generally speaking, I do believe. The, uh... Yeah, you can hustle and travel 150, but do you? Uh, but yeah, that probably. Take you lose a uh, point of stamina after every hour after six, if you do that. But so, yeah, it's really possible. We, we keep going then. So you let the ship go? It's just about out of sight now, anyway. It's How many miles could fast, Torque travel per hour? It's going pretty fast. What do you? What? Uh, I asked um, how travel or how fast could Torque travel in an like per hour if he's booking it? Not not dead sprinting. So what's your mobility? Uh, my mobility is base fourteen. So yeah, it's uh, times two in miles on open terrain and perfect weather. So he could actually go 28 miles per day. Per hour? No, no per day. Per per obviously day. not per hour. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, okay. and that's, that's clear weather, perfect flat terrain or a good road. And if he's expanding stamina to go fast? Yeah, if you do the uh, hustle, the force, uh, tw so it's 28, uh, wow, 42. 42 miles. Okay, so Tori could get there in like two days if he yeah. expended all of his stamina. 42 miles in 10 hours. And uh, yeah, yeah, and you would eat up like, what is that, six stamina points. Yeah, Kadir has mobility nine, so he's not hustling anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, why he's on a ship. They move faster than legs. <laughs> um, she, ain't, she ain't running at all. <laughs> Marishka. Yeah, oh, no. she's yeah. <laughs> so, um, Orlando, excuse me, I had a question for you. Uh, si. we, we plan to make port at Karelis to offload this other ship and perhaps these prisoners. What are you thinking? Oh, so you, you have heard of Carvello. Um, it is on an island. It is probably the most, most northern port of Ismondos, so that is good thinking. I was thinking about landing there anyway, unless you wish to go to the city of Santago, but there has been rumors of war in Esmondos uh, since I left, so I am a, a bit loath to go there. It was once the seat of King Santo. You seem like you know what I speak of. <laughs> well, the player does, the character does. <laughs> um, well, I, I was more wondering if it is what sort of reward would be expected for selling these, for turning in these pirates? Well, I, um, so you suddenly, because your magnetism is pretty good, you suddenly notice, actually is Marichka standing there? And Tori? 
she's probably around. Still around, okay. Yeah, Doug's around. So he he seems to look around and almost like waiting for a moment where nobody's nearby, Kadir. Mm. And Lord or, uh, Orlando says, uh, my friend, I am, um, I, know I have not told the others yet and I perhaps I will in time. Uh, Marichka has become a bit of a pirate and I'm not so sure I trust that she's behind me, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yes. am, I, am I nearby? Well, he purposely waited for you to walk off, but you can um, make yeah, a. Yeah, he's doing this like kind of like in private. Okay, well, I'm going to do a perception check. I probably won't comment, but I'll so, at least be so fine. It's DL20 if he's uh, oh. waiting for you to literally to get to the other side of the ship. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so he, he chose his moment well. Yeah. I mean, Torek can roll too if you want, but it's DL20. Keep your safe. Eh. <laughs> but I feel like I can trust you, my friend, and you healed my wounds, which I am eternally thankful. I am um, a man of some means. I am a um, a don, uh, a lord. So I am a man of some wealth. I have land outside of Avaro. I have a small casa. And um, so technically, I am a, if you take them in there, I can deal with them. But we'd have to travel with them for 90 miles or so. And that we have no ship to do that to be very otherwise uh, I can use my authority in Corvello and to have them arrested and executed or whatever needs to happen. I I just don't know would there be a rebel, like a bounty on there for pirates? It's possible. The Crimson Skull Pirate is well known to my people, not so much to me for my city is inland, but uh, they have some notori- notoriety. Uh, so it seems like sometimes when Crimson Skull pirates in particular are captured, they are often are worth something. Not always, but perhaps. Something to <sighs> think of. Something to consider. Yes, that I is why I wanted to name the Ego at first, I, in case anyone happened to know who I was. So should we still talk to you, speak with you as Diego when we reach to Carvello, or should we mm. address you as Don or? Orlando. I do not think it matters at this point. Besides, I I will probably be seen by some people that might know me. That, okay, he start he trails off as Marichka is like come comes back. <laughs> he was like, well, if oh, the wound is, if the wound is still bothering you, I can certainly give you another massage. Ah, my friend. Uh, perhaps, perhaps uh, a bit later if you wish. But I, I think I will be fine. Orlando, you're still mm. wounded. I'm much better than I was. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, speaking of which, um, I do not know if you have noticed, or Torak might have, because he's been dealing with it more. One of the crewmen that we captured, it seems like he's uh, sick or something. I think he's trying to hide it. Hmm. One of ours? The one that was wounded by the, uh, the creature that you called. I should investigate that more. I do not want this sickness to spread. If such thing is possible, so you say maybe some sort of disease or something. I don't know, but if he was touched by a, a tainted creature, it could be even worse. Hmm. Well, we have no idea what attacks him on that ship. Hmm. See, but, uh, I just thought I would mention. Do as you wish. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I'm sorry. What, Captain? Capitan? We need to we need to quarantine him so he doesn't get anyone else sick. Mm, maybe too late, but um, I leave that to Kadir. He seems to be the healer. I will see to him. I do not know much of that, those things. Thank you for I pointing will... it out. Yes, I don't know how I missed it. I guess I was more concerned with healing wounds. Because you rolled a seven last time. <laughs> <laughs> for long-term care, yes. <laughs> I forgive you for not noticing something like that, especially if they were hiding it. Jeez. All right, well, I will investigate myself then. Let me, I, I bid you farewell for a moment. I, I, I think it's, it's that one there, the, the young one, the, yeah. one of the younger ones. I will go over to the young injured pirate and kind of bend down to look at him since I'm fairly tall and skinny and just kind yes. of examine him with my uh, healer's eye. <laughs> looks a little, uh, a little uncomfortable with you there. I will roll healing art to try to diagnose him. Uh, I, I am fine, my lord. I'm very fine. Just do with, with us what you wish. Damn it! <laughs> oh, 
God, oh, stop it. You're not helping. <laughs> You're not <He's> helping. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't see what Orlando's talking about. Yeah. See, the guy is hiding it pretty well. Do you need assistance? <laughs> but he has open wounds, though, still, right? Well, he's got him bandaged. Like, he's got him, he kind of yeah. made, like, his own I mean, little cloth. Well, I bandaged him up too, so I know he has wounds. I just yeah. Yeah, did a poor job of. But when you uncover, I mean, you do everything I would assume that you're supposed to do. And, yeah. and like the wounds, no, they, no, like, to you, they, to they the, seem to be fine. There's no discoloration. Hmm. That you can tell, yeah. Is he staggered? Would it, uh, he yeah, I just don't have a mark. I, just I, want, I, I, I mean, I'm just. Yeah, he's staggered. He's yeah, definitely he's, still kind of. Uh, to put it more realistic, I mean, he's got some broken ribs, and uh, the biggest wound is on his side, like two ribs are broken, and there's a big claw gash. Your wounds are making it difficult to, for you to work for. Let me... Uh... I'm, I'm sorry, I just... Uh, it was that creature that attacked me, perhaps. I don't know. Just leave me be. Uh, let me... I have some ways to heal you. It's not sorcery. I don't know who you are. I Your eyes you. are strange. They are indeed. I suppose I have no choice. You do not. <laughs> he just kind of resolves himself to the fate that you're going to poke and prod him some more. <laughs> not even that. I'm going to basically cut myself. <laughs> okay. <with> my... <laughs> that makes him feel better. Yeah. <laughs> with my, I take my bronze dagger and I cut myself and I... Uh, I kind of like cut my cut the tip of my thumb, <laughs> and uh, you know put the th my thumb to that that broken skin by the by the by his uh, broken ribs there. But you said and... you're not using sorcery, my lord. What what are you doing? Please, I, just leave it be. <clears throat> Sit still. Does Mirichka see this... all this? Probably at this point, it's okay, a, a little bit of a I, I mean, I'm not saying a thing. I'm not even other than sit still. I'm not saying or like waving my hands. There's no magic going on here. Well, you're, you're cutting yourself and touching. Yeah. Him. Yeah. <laughs> he will, he will, and go over and like stare at him, sure that he, you know, he's kind of like so good. He's like, see, so, yeah, so I kind of like yeah, put my hand on his ribs there and. You know, focus inward and so be it. Send my blood into his body to seek out his damaged flesh and knit it, knit it closed. <laughs> so you kind of, yep. You do. So, how much you want to? I will him? burn. Uh, let me see. It's one health is done. So, let me put myself down one health. Where's my character? Um. I'll burn six stamina, so that's three health back. Three health back. All right. So yeah, you kind of touch him with your the bloody cut, and uh, he's just like when Marish comes around, he just kind of hangs his head, like just like hope, like okay, whatever. <laughs> he's really weird. You're touching me. But then you know, after a few moments, he kind of looks perks up a little bit. Like uh, he's still not like all cheerful and happy about it, but he definitely looks uh, less pissed off about it. And he just sort of nods and. Uh, Whatever you did, I, I, I thank you. I, I think. I still feel a bit strange, but I feel a bit better, I suppose. It's a gift of my people. And, and, when, you, and when you say that, uh, Kadir, actually, when you were touching him, you could tell there was like a little push, but like the wound that you healed mm -hmm. was a little more difficult. Hmm. As if the, the flesh isn't quite stitching back as something is quickly as it should. There is something in your flesh. I don't know what it is, but there is something there. I don't know what it is. Just go ahead and maroon us or sell us to a port city. I don't care. I'm it trying to make sure you do not die. You may yet live. I thank you for what it is worth. Can I see what <laughs> what might be ailing him? Can I make a roll just like looking at him? See if I can perceive yeah, anything. But it would be a you know, a looking at him backed up by healing arts. Yeah, Unless, I know. Well, you could just try. I, I can try. I can try. Well, I I can 
Well, wait, would it be per- perception or healing arts? Well, healing arts would be the better way route. I mean, you might could, but it doesn't look like anything's like obviously wrong with them. So healing arts is probably your better yeah. shot than just probably not going to do a lucky well stab at perception. You never know. You might roll well. I've been rolling crap all night. <laughs> okay, with healing arts. Um, let's see. Of course, you're slightly short. So you examine him, and the only thing you can tell is kind of what Kadir just could tell, even though he didn't really, he didn't say it out loud. But like he's this kid is healing healing a little slower than he probably should. Like he had some broken ribs that were Kadir bound pretty well, and they're just not quite healing as fast. So are you terminally ill, boy? I wasn't until I was attacked by that creature of ice, and then I was taken captive. No, for someone your age, you should really heal faster. It's a terrible choice. I know. That's why I'm worried. And that man there with the storm in his eyes. What is he? I don't know. That's what I was afraid of. What is going to happen to us, Capitan? I don't know. What do you want to happen? I would want to live, I would think, and not to be a pirate anymore. Oh, so you wouldn't want to be a pirate? At least a Crimson Skull pirate? I didn't want to in the first place. They they captured me when I was only 13 summers. And now I'm only 14. Can I do a perception check to see if he's full of crap? Sure. Yeah, I I also want to empathize (laughs) with empathy him. That's plus plus one, so 23. 23, okay. Uh, Who else is rolling? I'm doing, I'm right there, so I will do it as well. Doesn't really matter. I'll roll crap again. Eh, less crappy, but still not great. Kadir, you think what you think, but uh, Marichka, you you either this kid is the best actor slash liar in the world, or he's telling the truth. Hmm. There's okay. a look in his eyes of almost like desperation and sadness beyond I just think, the injuries. I think you're telling the truth. So, how about this? And I keep my voice kind of hushed. You behave. We won't turn you in. You can join our crew. Aye. Very well. Thank you. It's a secret, though. Of course. Oh, um, Capitan. Mm. Tell the man with the storm eyes, do not touch me again with the blood. Although I, I think for what he did. I just, <laughs> I don't trust uh, Santeria, is, as Mondians call it. So, uh, sorcery. He said it was not sorcery, but then he, anyway. I will, I will shut up. Here's the thing about you, darling. You would have to chant something for it to actually work. So if it was magic, you would have probably known. So all magic is verbal? There is no other way? Well, there are some ways, but I believe oh. that is above his skills. Well, I do feel better. I suppose I should not complain. All right. Well, <laughs> if you're if you're feeling sick, let one of us know, and then you can take a break. We don't need you getting everyone else sick. I, I Actually, there was. A, I feel no. fine. I just did not sleep well. All right. But perhaps I should not have. There were more captives than we had room on the chain gang, basically. Yeah, there was, was there one extra person, and I, I kind of assumed in my head that you guys left this guy out of the chain since he was so beat up. Okay, that's fine then. So he's yeah. not even chained up. So he's Sound not even rowing right, right now. But. Yeah. Sure. And okay. that does that include the pirate, the, the captain too, or is this? I assume y'all captain? put him in chains too. Okay. But he, he's been pretty quiet, hasn't really said okay. a whole lot. He's been oddly well behaved. Occasionally, he look glances at Marichka and kind of gives her a, a kind of a weird look. <laughs> All right, she's walk, She's walking her way to him. Then. <laughs> I mean, this has just been over the course of like the last twelve hours. But. Yeah. <laughs> got a problem buddy you got something in your eye <laughs> guys uh, maybe some stank she capitan again <laughs> well i guess well, as I, we not captain anymore i was just looking your way giving you a little wink is all oh how sweet i, I thought so as well i'm feeling a bit better if you should care oh that's good Aye. the top shape for when we sell you and maybe you're hanged Mm. about that I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen you see oh 
Well, I couldn't help it over here that there's something about Cofello, is it? Come again? I, I sort of overheard something about Covello. Oh, I think it's yeah. a city off an island off the coast of Ismondos. Yes, that's where we're heading. Well, I just wanted to see, let you to know that uh, if you let us free there, I have some kinfolk there. I'll be taken well care of. You won't see me again. Just something to consider, you know. Hmm. So you have friends in Cabello. I know, it's hard to believe, isn't it now? Oh, it definitely is, but what does interest me? Where in Cabello? Mm, here and there and about. Hmm. You're gonna tell me exactly where. Hmm. I tell you what, you let me out of these shackles, I'll tell you about anything. All right, well, good luck with whatever authorities decide to do with you. I hear they hang pirates in this month. Yeah. All right, you drive a hard bargain, Capitan. <laughs> I'll give you that. Unless you want to tell me where these other pirates are. Make a persuasion <laughs> check. Yep. Intimidation yeah. specialty, if you want. Uh, I can't, be, can't be haggling since I'm haggling with his life. <laughs> nah, it's more like haggling with merchants. All right. All right. <laughs> Six drops of blood. <laughs> How about five? That's a thousand cuts. Seventeen. <laughs> so you say that, and you, you start to walk away, and then suddenly he's like, "Well, Captain Todd, you know, I thought about it a bit further." Mm. Took you long enough. Well, you know, ten heartbeats is long enough, I think, in my world. But anyway, there's a place in uh, Cavallo that uh, sort of a hidden harbor, shall we say? If you want to put your ships there, the authorities won't uh, come looking for you as well, because last time I checked, you just turned pirate yourself. I didn't do anything. I just oh, took in people know? that attacked us. Mm. Haven't right. broken the law yet, darling. You just sail around into the regular harbor then. Good luck to you. So this hidden harbor. Ah, well, I've got your interest now, do I? Well, need to know my options. So the northeastern side of the island. All right. It's a hidden harbor. It's where smugglers go a lot. Oh. Well, I, know I should know. Huh. Did some uh, some uh, smuggling myself? So. <sighs> Can't say I'm surprised. Hmm. <laughs> well, any other information you would like to tell me that might. Make your life a little bit more worthwhile for me to keep you alive. Oh, that's about it, I suppose. Well, if you think of anything else, you let me know. I've been quite uh, quite straight with you. I haven't made any of that up. You'll see if you go there yourself. We'll see. Anyway, and keep it in mind. How many typically are there? How many what? Pirates. Pirates? Yes. Where? Here? Seems to be about a, a two dozen of them. All right. <laughs> Never mind. He's <laughs> <laughs> tired of the BS. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes back to rowing with his freaking shackles on. Yep. <laughs> the, the cabin boy goes free. And. <laughs> Probably Rich has a soft spot for kids. So. <laughs> so, almost an adult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of. Almost. Kind of, but not quite. So, um, yeah. <laughs> otherwise, the day kind of goes on and you guys continue sailing. Um, a few hours later, it begins. It gets dark. And you can see now off the uh, port side that those series of islands you saw seem to be kind of fading into the distance and now it looks like open water all around. So for tonight, you're going to have to do another sailing roll. Unless, unless you're going to pull over. Some people do go to shore bank, during the drop night. Drop anchor. Yep, or drop uh, anchor. But... I, don't, I don't think we should. All right. Because now you do have the stars navigate by at night, so there's cool if it's not too cloudy. And then add plus five to that, so 28. Wow, 28. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you find the hidden harbor immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hidden oh, harbor. That. I know about that one. That <laughs> hidden harbor, yes, of course. I that myself years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I founded that harbor. <laughs> I thought you were talking about another one. It was carved into it, like on the on the on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. See those initials? Those are mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. ooh. All right. The night goes by all uneventful like. Woo-hoo. Bringing us Woo. to a new coastal map. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> you get six more health. And yes, more healing for Torek. Torek, is he totally healed now? He's probably close. Not quite. Not quite. He's missing like two health. Right. Is Orlando totally healed? Or the captain totally the uh, other captain? Uh, totally Orlando healed. now looks just about totally healed. And the other captain is no longer staggered. Actually, wait. Nope, he's still staggered. <laughs> Torek got him down to two health. <laughs> Keep him oh staggered. boy. <laughs> is zero health means little for him negative five also means little <laughs> it's only when he gets like negative ten is when he really starts worrying <laughs> alright so at the early more oh cool good thing you rolled well in sailing so you guys managed to, to avoid all hazards during the night. You don't see any, didn't even see any ships. It's a very peaceful night. It was actually a clear night, so both moons made an appearance. And the greater moon is technically now full, the first night of full. And Marichka can definitely feel it. So if a certain thing happens, you, don't, you won't have to pay as much stamina as normal. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you read, I think it's how it works. I can't remember how I rewrote it's not it. A forced, it. It's not a forced thing? Uh, I think it used to, and I feel like I changed it, but maybe not. It's a forced thing. Oh, you may have to make a resolve roll to keep it from happening. Yeah. Which? Uh, resolve or endurance, I think, actually. I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> it's fine. I got a plan. I got a plan. <laughs> hey, guys, look over there. <laughs> 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 Uh, let's see. That's a blood talent. Blood talents. There we go. What? It, what? Uh, we're just looking up a blood talent here. During the three nights when the greater moon is full. Yep, this is the first night of that. Or the two nights of the lesser uh, full moon. You're going to change your day. So actually, you since you're so natural can... born, you are. Um... You can control it. You're, you're not control forced to. It. Yeah, I, I thought I got rid of that. Yeah, I think. it doesn't. There's no force about it. Oh. Yeah, you're considered what's a natural born instead of uh, someone who was aff- afflicted with it. Oh. So you were born with a gift. I mean, you can like story wise say that you were afflicted, but mechanically it still works. It. Works. It also keeps player characters from giving it to other people. Yeah. To to for to gain power, even though there's a lot of negatives for being one also. Whole, if, if the whole group is that, then <laughs> we're a whole. Oh, I, got some pla- I got some plans for tonight, then. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy! So you are in control of it, but you could, but you feel like it's easier to do tonight and tomorrow and the next night. Oh, I'm immune. Sorry. <laughs> oh really? So okay. none of, you stay in the form longer, and it also costs less stamina. Actually, would Torque be immune too, since he's trollborn? Torque? What? Would he be uh, immune if he is since he's, nah, he's, he's still, he's Do I not even get an endurance, an endurance check? He's no, I, no, I'm enough. saying you could. You, it's. I'm just saying like I'm immune to it uh, because I'm not human. Yeah. But, don't I get at least an endurance check for yeah, it? It's not okay. automatic. Well, just everybody saying, gets an endurance. I was asking check. if you were immune to it because you're a trollborn. No, like, he's no, not immune. no, I'm not immune to it because I'm a trollborn. I'm immune yeah. to it because I have a plus eleven to endurance. Well, you're resistant to it. You're not immune, but yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you were susceptible to you it still critically you're fail. Human, you have your part. Human. I don't nope. think I physically could. The DC's <laughs> what, 15, 20? Plus, how much damage you take from the wound. But, but yeah, you That's got a really good, good chance. Yeah. So, but to the main point, so you felt that last night, Marichka. So, um, right before dawn, based on your sailing roll, 
Huh? You can tell that the very tip of these, this big island that you've been kind of passing through through most of the night, uh, mm -hmm. the very tip is like it kind of dawns on you are like, oh, that's where Corellus is. We've, I, I've been mispronouncing. I've been saying Cavello also, but it's actually called Corellus. You can yeah, probably see it on the saying. map. It is on the map. Yeah, I was like, I didn't want to correct you because it's your story, but uh. <laughs> well, there, there's also a Cavello also, but it's but it's it's yeah. Anyway, this this place is Corellus. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Um, but anyway, you can see, or even before dawn, you can see the lights of a uh, fairly, fairly good sized town, maybe small city on the tip of the island. And you, uh, based on your uh, sailing navigation role, this, you definitely know this is Corellus, which is an is Ismondian city. Captain, before we enter port, I wanted to confirm that this vessel was a Crimson Skull vessel, was it not? Correct. And are there any markings that would then say we are no longer Crimson Skulls so that when we sail into a <laughs> civilized port of call, we are not immediately arrested or attacked? There was one major thing. Do y'all remember? Uh, I wasn't here, so I don't know. The main <laughs> sail has a huge yeah. uh, red skull <laughs> embroidered on it. And oh, all good. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Not um, just a mere banner, but the sail, the main. <laughs> yeah. so but you could have switched like... it out. You did find spare sailcloth down below. So if you wanted to, switch <laughs> maybe take that big red skull <laughs> down. Just, just a thought. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is weird. So it's funny that the Crimson Skull was preying on another Crimson Skull boat then, because we would have been sailing <laughs> with the Crimson Skull when they attacked us. Well, that's, that's Unless right. They Coming to like talk. <laughs> yeah, let's fix that right now. Thank you for put, pointing that out. <laughs> I have no desire to be hung as a pirate. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Take yeah. down the skull. I'll, I'll, I'll have the crew do that real quick. <laughs> okay. You just want to take it down and not replace the sail, or do you want to replace it with some of the, the, the spare sail down below that doesn't have the I mean, do we do we have to replace it with a sail? Yeah, I mean, you'll lose a little bit of speed. I mean, we're right there though, so I think we're. And fine. it's a, it's a two master two mast ship. I don't know if you see on the. Um. So yeah, you would lose one of the main sails, but not all of them. Is the other oh. sail red as well, or are they? It's just white or white sailcloth with red embroidery. It's uh, it's pure white sailcloth. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. So. And um. It's more than just sail cloth. It's actually already been cut, so it literally is a. Gotcha. It's sale. just a replacement the sail. If we, if it was torn, you can just put yeah. it up. Yeah. So. You wouldn't even no have reason. to make a sailing roll. It's so we, it's easy. Like any experienced crew knows how to do it. It only take like 10, 15 minutes. I mean, we might as well replace the sail unless you want to continue flying under the crimson skull banner. No, let's replace it. Hmm. The captured pirate says, "Uh, he starts laughing. I was kind of wondering when you were going to figure that out." She gives him a big grin. I'll, I'll just jump overboard now, will I? <laughs> <laughs> it might be wise. Yeah, see, that's one of the problems with, with doing a theater of the mind. <laughs> <laughs> By yeah. the way, the big red skull that everyone sees <laughs> just forgot was there. Because <laughs> we mentioned it three episodes ago. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. uh, <laughs> Before yeah. I even joined. <laughs> Yeah. First of all, in all fairness, he might assume that you wanted to leave it on purpose. So. Yeah, exactly. So just, yeah. just, uh, just check it. I don't think that'd be welcome in port. And actually, kind of Orlando should have said something too. Like, uh, we shouldn't go in a port with that. <laughs> I'll keep, I'll keep the sail, the red crimson or the crimson skulls sails in my quarters, hidden away. Yeah, you can. Uh, get, it's pretty big, but if you fold it, you can fold it down to the size of like a trunk. Yeah. Chest or something. In case we want to frighten some people, who knows? <laughs> Raise the red sail. Oh, here we go again, pirating. <laughs> and you remember there was also a smuggler's compartment at the bottom of one of the crates, but it's actually too small for the sail. Oh. But you could put other stuff in there. And actually, I guess we would probably take the sail down, the red sail down from the other. Actually, no, we can leave that, the red sail on the boat that we're towing. It's like because we're it's a captured vessel. So we're, oh, like, we I'm captured. sorry. That's yeah. Sorry, I I, I confused you guys and confused myself. The one you captured is the one that has the 
the red skull, the crimson skull embroidered on it. The one gotcha. that you currently have that you escaped from does not have any obvious marking. Oh, okay. So I wasn't, I was more worried about our both, both yeah. that were actually piloting having crimson yeah. skull. You know, like we're basically, we're towing the ship into port because we captured it. I yeah. don't have a problem with that. I was so, more worried about our ship having a giant red skull on it. Yeah. So it actually, it looks kind of badass, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's what I was more worried about. Um, so yeah, I mean, if that's the case, I would say leave it, leave the other sail up. Oh, yeah, because we're bringing in the pirates. So like, if it yeah. look as long as it looks like it's not being sailed, I think we're fine. <laughs> yeah, it's an empty ship. There, there's nobody on deck. So, All right, leave it up. Let's, okay. let's be proud of ourselves. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now we're privateers, and eventually I can take the privateer talent. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> If anybody will hire you at this point, actually, they probably they usually do hire pirates because they know how to pirate. I'm not a pirate. <laughs> they know how to catch pirates. A, I've never been a pirate. <laughs> All right. You are a pirate. Yo, yo, heavy. I've been attacking <laughs> pirates. If, if anything, I That's am true. already a privateer. Technically, I'm you've a, been a unofficial privateer. So yeah. Hmm. All right. So. Let's get All right. Home. Into port we go with our captives. and So the question is, do you go to the so-called hidden port that he suggested, or do you go to the obvious harbor of Corellus? Yeah, if we're um, going to the hidden port, we need to raise the red flag on our own sail. <laughs> assuming, that wasn't, <laughs> assuming that wasn't BS. Yeah. Um, I was, was going to go to the regular port, because I think that we should, we should hand them in. Because if we bring you know, their buddies to this hidden port, then that's just gonna, gonna they're gonna get angry because it's attack us yeah yeah attack us so i'm gonna go to the the okay. actual port but keep in mind that i might want to go to that hidden port later okay all right so you guys come sailing in it'll be just before dawn so the city is fully awakened but you do see lots of uh cauldrons of fire burning around the harbor and um it's not a very large harbor, but it is a deep water harbor, which is really cool. Like your ship could have a six, eight foot deep draft and you're not going to scrub the bottom or anything. And uh, so you come sailing in um, pretty easily, just casually into the docks before anybody really notices. No ship comes out to meet you. But when you do find a, a docking berth, um, actually, that's going to be a sailing roll, even though it's pretty easy. To, to bring her in without crashing. <laughs> Could you? Since, since we have, it's we have two ships to deal with. Easy. But you notice the harbor is pretty crowded, so you're having to kind of slip her into this narrow berth. Oh, I got a 15 with all the bonuses. It's not bad. I mean, might only okay. be a plus four, so. 15, yeah. No, you, uh, you, you slip her in there pretty easily. And right as you uh, and your crew throws the mooring ropes and, tie, and ties the ship off and all that kind of normal stuff. And uh, as you do that, you see uh, it looks like four armed men approaching. Uh, Ismondians, you know, kind of medium height, slightly tan skin, dark hair usually. And uh, they're carrying sabers. Actually, one has an estoc, which is like an early form of a rapier. Oh. And blades drawn or are they just no they're just hands on them decide. hands gotcha. on hands on the hilt so they just kind of walk up and the one the, the man with the s-talk the sh uh, shorter man but kind of a little bit better dressed than the others he's like good morning i must ask uh, who, who who is this ship and who is the uh, captain this is uh he says this in a it's mandian no idea what you just said but hello <laughs> then he uh he repeats it in Don orlando <laughs> he repeats it in Brithian, rolling his eyes. Yeah. In Orlando, I don't, kind of walks it. I don't know if Tori knows Brithian. <laughs> you mean it's Mandian? Brithian to you, so I. Oh think no, he does not. Uh, I, I, Torik knows Norish. That is it. Beyond a couple of uh, half languages. Oh, so I thought no you were. Been... I thought you were well, communicating he, with like a pigeon level Brithian. Yeah, he, he has he has a pigeon couple and pigeon in a language or two, but. Yeah, no, it's just Brithian. I'm fluent in Norish though, so he can have a conversation with me at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah I have no idea what he says. I, you, you, your accents are strange, and you look stranger. So no. <laughs> I will piece. say Corinthian to the guards. This is my ship. My name is Marichka. Ah, uh, Marichka, what's your renown? 
more HP. Six. Marichka, yes. Do you have a name of the ship? Actually, we don't. It doesn't matter. I was just curious. So if you're docking here, here, welcome. First of all, welcome to Karelis. Do you Thank have you. any, uh, we don't have to examine your ship. I'm afraid uh, Ismandos is uh, not this part of Ismandos. You're safe, but is at war, unfortunately, has been the last fortnight. Oh, well, yes. I'm sorry so to we hear must, that. Yes, well, it happens. Um, unfortunately, we must investigate your, uh, your ship and see if you do not have any contraband. I am sorry, it is, it is the way. Very well. By the way, this ship that you have in tow is uh, Crimson Skull Pirates? Yes, they tried to attack us. We defeated them. <laughs> Very good. Torek stands behind her strongly. <laughs> See, <laughs> he kind of notices Torek nice too. Price and... for the ship, actually, what? we thought we could catch a nice price for the ship. Well, we will see to that. We will have to investigate both ships. This, uh, this is your crew. And he points more specifically at Torek. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I see. The, Torek the does have the frost giant ship. axe on his back. <laughs> Very well. Um, he kind of whispers to his, his men, and they, they suddenly look like they're not like really thrilled about having to come aboard both of these ships with characters like Torek aboard. <laughs> but uh, they, they do so. Okay. So two of them come on your, your ship proper, and two go on the uh, Crimson Skull Pirate ship. They actually take a small dinghy out to it and climb the netting up to the side. So. And they apparently do a quick, quick investigation. So if you guys want to hide anything, let me know. Otherwise, they're going to probably search um, the place. So oh, I've, I've hidden all the scrolls detail. and the journals and books. And uh, you probably hide the old sail. Oh, no, there was no old sail on this oh, one. No, Never mind. Yeah. God, I keep yeah. forgetting. Sorry. <laughs> but I, I definitely would have hidden the, um, the, all the books and materials and such into okay. that compartment. Uh, at the bottom, yeah, they'll all fit there. Yeah. So they they like search. They do kind of a moderate search. It's not super detailed. They don't appear. They you notice that if you follow any of them, one of them, he looks into that very crate with the false bottom, and looks in it and walks away from it. Doesn't notice the false bottom. And uh, let's see what else they would have. They notice the catapult. They don't really say much. Actually, the one guy kind of cracks. He goes, "This is a warship, yeah." Notice he kind of pumped. Do not worry, it is fine. And uh, <laughs> they search a little bit more uh, in some things, and uh, they notice the pirates in chains, and finally uh, the, they address the elephant in the room. So the, the fancy man with kind of the, the flowing dark mustache that a lot of Ismandian uh, men wear, especially nobles, he says, uh, so I take it these are your prisoners, your captives? Yes. Very well. Uh, he kind of draws his S-Doc and he actually goes up and pokes and prods some of the pirates like he completely doesn't care. Like if he intimidates them, by, cuts by them. By this point, the cabin boy is not chained up. By the yeah, way. He, yeah, he hadn't been chained up the entire... He's been kind of like... Okay. Kept, kept basically... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's with the other crew now. He's with Malik. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of which, the second soldier that was searching comes dragging out the uh, young boy as if he might have been trying to hide. And they clearly found him. And they just kind of throw him down. My lord, I found this uh, this young boy hiding. Ah, another pirate, is it? Or is no, this your crew? no. No, he's with crew. He likes to play hide and seek with me sometimes. <laughs> ah, very well. Very well, very well. And the, the other pirates are like, oh, son of a... <laughs> Let's see if any of them betray your... Oh, they don't say anything. In fact, the uh, captured pirate kind of gives you a wink like, like, well done, lass. <laughs> it was such a bad persuasion thing as well. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I was going to have you I, uh, make persuasion bluffing, but this guy just like, he just kind of goes right doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. care. But he's having fun, like, fun kind of taunting in some of the other pirates. So there's uh, um, eight of these uh, men that are captured. 
I believe so. Good. Yes, Krug yes. Skull Pirate, the worst. I do not like pirates. My father was killed by a pirate. He gets like right in the face of the captain, like almost poking him with his uh, stock. I'm sorry for your loss. It was a long time ago, but I've not gotten over it, have I? Apparently not. Hmm. I tell you what, I do not think there's specifically a bounty on the ship or these uh, unknown fools right here. I've never even seen or heard of any of these people. But we will investigate them, see if they've been branded as pirates. If that is the case, then you will be rewarded with a bounty if you wish. What kind of bounty would unknowns mm. like these catch uh, for? Probably not very much, but uh, I can make a case to the uh, mag magistrato that you are rewarded as uh, well as possible. Perhaps uh, you might expect uh, 25, 30 silver coins, maybe more. I, I turn to my crew and kind of like give them a look like, is that good with everyone or should we? Is that for the ship as well? No, I think that was just for the crew. Yeah, that's the only deal he's talking about. Yeah. Norlandus is a... Uh, Yes, tell this, uh, this pompous fool uh, that if we wish to sell the ship, that he should give us a bit much better price. Uh, are we keeping the ship or are we selling it? We're selling the ship. Orlando, why don't you um, schmooze? <laughs> I, I can if you wish. I do not know this man, but I do speak the, uh, we are of the same culture and language, of course. Yeah. Si. Oh, very well. I, I will be useful. You notice he's like changed clothing. He's got like a nicer vest on and uh, a cape and his uh, saber has been all uh, cleaned up. The jewels are shining on it and he sort of <laughs> swaggers I, over to... I look to Orlando and kind of like nod, like meaningfully, you know? He kind of nods back. Like, he seems like a new man that he's almost totally healed, one, down by one health. And uh, goes over and starts schmoozing with the, uh, whoever this guy is, maybe he's the harbor master, is it really said who he is, but and uh, there's some talking back and forth. So do y'all do anything as they talk? It looks like it's not particularly going that well. Like, like this guy doesn't seem to care who Orlando is or know him or something. Is there anyone <laughs> else in the conversation? I don't speak Asmandian. Yeah, this is all in Asmandian. Does Malik yeah, Torek doesn't even have pig uh, doesn't even have pigeon as Mandian. Yeah, nor does Malik. Yeah, uh, then none of the crew members know Ismondi, and then we kind of just have to leave it up to him, see if he could get a better deal. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's not a bad deal for really, we did no work for us, so what does we get 30 silver and pirates are, are sent to the authorities? <laughs> so, during this time, the captured pirate looks your way, Marishka, and he's like, oh. last chance, lass. I noticed you didn't go to the hidden port, did you? Hmm. I might pay a visit, just not with you. So it would seem. Just know that my blood will be on your hands. And if I can produce a ghost in the other world, I'll be haunting you to the rest of the days. Oh, darling, if only I believed in ghosts. And mm -hmm. then she turns away. Maybe I'll make you believe. <laughs> Did you hear me? He starts getting mad, like yelling <laughs> and stuff as you walk away. Unless you want to tell me anything else of importance. <laughs> <laughs> now the guy, now the guy with the stock is kind of looking over and what is going on? Is this pirate making your life difficult, Capitan Marichka? No, it's quite the opposite. I'm making his life quite difficult. So I see. If you wish, I have no problem with running my stock through his throat, and I'll just say it was an accident. Oh, no, but thank you for the offer. And I, I turned to the captain like, last chance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, make a, got if the captain wanted to dead, roll. he would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a persuasion roll, merch cut, to yeah, if you want. I will. Yeah. And what, what is it you're trying to persuade? More information? Yeah, just anything. Anything useful that might be to me. So, Torek, what are you doing? Just kind of scouring at the, the Torek, folks? there was I know you mentioned there might be something on him. Uh, if you wanted to role play, letting any of us know what that is, now is probably the time. Mm. 
Uh, I'm thinking about it. Well, you got to think about about it because because he's about to go. (laughs) Nah. All right. The captain just says, uh, I wait, 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 wait. I didn't mean to raise my voice there, Marichka. Marichka is a, it's a lovely yeah. name, by the way, now that I've oh. heard it. Oh. Beautiful name. Anyway, oh. enough about that. I do have a, a fine uh, artifact upon me, a finger. It was being worn on my finger. If you can allow me to reach into my boot. How about this? Oh, so that's where it went. How about this? Torek you says aloud. He kind of looks at Torek like, how the, nice how the hell did you? Hi, and I check the boot. How about that? Fine. It's in my right boot. All right. Just ignore the snake in there. Joke, pirate humor, never mind. You won't get it. And the smell. Well, that as well. Should I do a per- perception? <laughs> Now that I'm like focused on it, just to make sure there's nothing weird that's going to happen. <laughs> his boot Search, is trapped. Searching his boot? You never know. <laughs> so yeah. Um, there's a mouse trap in there. Make a perception roll to search his boot, or at least his leg, I guess. Yep. Uh, 25. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so if there is a snake, so I'll know. <laughs> you find a hidden knife down in there that nobody found. Um, Deep okay. down in there, and then further down at the very bottom um, of the boot, and it's not even in a compartment, it's just kind of like under his foot, uh, you find a, a ring, and the ring is uh, is bejeweled, and it's got a flat side of it, almost like a signet ring. Can I do a perception or crafting roll on it? Yeah, so you have to fish it out, of course. And you do. He uh, just kind of... Yeah, I'm going to remove... Make some my- comment about his feet being ticklish. (laughs) 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 You fish it out though. though. What? I'm going to remove the knife first though. Okay. So you pull that out. It's not even a full dagger. It's just a small, uh, sort of cleverly hidden kind of dagger, probably balanced for throwing also. Mm, Nice. And then as you fish the um, ring out, you suddenly notice that your uh, fingers are burning. And then Ooh. You keep holding it or not? Um, do I have it in my hand right now? Yeah, like as you were reaching in and touching it, uh, you know, you, as you, cause, you know, you look at it uh, and it starts to burn your finger. So oh, it's feels. out of his boot now, correct? Yeah. What? It's out of his boot now, correct? I, I assume you pulled it out, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, oof. can I do a magical arts check to see if I can undo whatever burning is happening yeah. right now? I think it may be related to more of the material than what you are. Yeah. It's just, it's not really hurting you, but it is kind of b- burning for some reason. It feels uncomfortable. And then you realize oh, it looks it's... like it's made of silver. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. She, she, um, Without trying to alarm anyone, she puts Flight it in a pocket. She puts it in a pocket, so she's so not touching it anymore. You can make a slight of hand roll if you're trying to be suave about it. Do I want to be? I don't know. Don't you need to roll a resolve for that phobia? <laughs> oh, that's true. Do you have? <laughs> oh, I was talking about something else, but. Uh... Do you have There's an actual a, phobia of silver? Don't you have to have uh, oh, you have to have a, I think you have to have a phobia of silver. Um, All right. Well, never mind. Final... After we're... Didn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah. Suffer the phobia of silver. Oh, yeah. Major it's a major, weakness. major weakness. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like a resolve roll. D- DL 20. <laughs> <laughs> but it physically burns as, as well because of a certain Okay. Time. 24. Oh. Yeah, you will. You you will. I to, the sucker on to keep it. Yeah, so you put it on. It's very uncomfortable, but you manage to kind of will yourself. It's got jewels on it. Um, I I was joking when I said I put it on. I'm gonna put it in oh, a pocket. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna let it burn <laughs> my finger. Off. Tried, but it's not actually doing any damage. It's really uncomfortable. I mean, it could maybe over time, but yeah, you put it in your belt pouch. So you got a glance at it, but you didn't really get a super good look at it. And what, pray tell, does this do, Captain? Well, I wished I knew, didn't I? It's a beautiful ring. It's, called, it's got a moonstone on it. Huh. 
So it's an opal. It's very expensive. Oh. But like anyway, it. wait, it comes to mind something else that might have done. There's a certain document that you're able to read by the light of it. Should you find it? I spent my luck on it. <laughs> <laughs> she says, she says in character. <laughs> 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 we all spend our luck eventually, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. This is good to know. This makes my life a lot easier as I'm crying on the inside. <laughs> I thank you, Captain. So, does that spare my life at least? Something tells me no, but maybe you have some <laughs> sense of honor. I don't know. I can. I might be able to convince them to sell you as a slave, but that's only if their price is lower. Speaking of which, the uh, the young man with the, the dark mustache and the S stock comes wandering over. Sorry, Captain Marichka, this man is still giving me a problem. Yes. No. Hmm. I think we've settled our business. So you wish to try our... him as a buccaneer or a pirate, pirata? Huh? You wish to uh, for us to try him as a pirato, as a pirate? Oh, what do you guys think? Out of character. Captain's <laughs> looking at you like, <laughs> come on now. <laughs> I does not. Kadir does not like pirates, so. And, and then suddenly, in a, a desperate look, he looks at Tor, uh, Torek. Torek, is it? Come on now. <laughs> it was a fair fight. You even said I was a worthy warrior. What? Come on now, you'll not see me again. Unless you want to team up, of course. <laughs> not helping yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any way to do like a lore roll to see if that price that they gave us would be more so than if we sold them as slaves? Yeah. Yeah, you can try that. That's pretty obscure. I'm not so against the, keeping him. The deal's pretty high. <laughs> I'm. I wouldn't keep him. Oh, oh that's, that's not critical failure. Actually, in this case. So Great. I will send this to Madison to role play. I'm going to send you a, a message. This offer is insulting. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, that was a thing. I give it at least 30 gold. 30 gold for him. <laughs> <laughs> all right instead of typing it i'll just tell you uh you think that's actually probably more than it you should be getting like that's okay. well more than a fair price wait what they're offering is a, is a good price yeah you think it's it's worth a lot more if these are just like low scum pirates they're really not worth hardly anything okay so so the just to be sure I'm role playing this correctly. <laughs> the price that I was given is one that's favorable toward. To yeah, favorable. more more than more than favorable. Okay. All right. You can have them. Ah, right, well. You chose poorly, didn't you? You'll be, be haunted by a ghost. And he's like, that's that'll be enough with you, you little <laughs> pirate bastard. And they just kind of like rip him up out of the go. seat. I wish I had ghosts. I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, if only, if only, if only I could see He's spirit. Like cursing at you. She's got a ring, by the way, an illegal ring. It's contraband. It's cursed. She's got it. She's took it from me. He's like shouting desperately. And they're all like, whatever. So they, they lead them away. The other pirates are actually fairly quiet and resolved. Uh, they're just kind of like, whatever. They're just kind of resolved to their fate. But the, the captain's picking up. Oh, so they, only, so they only took the captain? So no, they're taking all of them. I'm oh, just saying okay. The others are just kind of going quietly in right. chains. So they lead them all off, and um, the uh, the swaggering uh, young uh, harbor master, if that's what he is, or at least the guard watch captain for this area, kind of walks up, and he's like, "Very well, very very good." Um, I would have to check if uh, Carvalho or any a local lord or a merchant in the area would be interested in the captured boat. But for now, consider this. And he like throws a little pouch at you that's got coins in it. This oh. should uh, this should be good. If you if I find out from the magistrato that there is more, that uh, I will make sure that I come and pay you. Is there any uh, idea that I have of where this is going, of where they're taking them? 
Uh, I mean, like you could watch where they march them, or do you mean like more of a lore? Like, what do you like? If you want to watch where they're marching them, they're just—they're not taking them that far. Now the sun is not up yet, but this whole harbor's lit up pretty well. I would like to make note as to where they take them. Are you going to so break? That'd be lore, law specialty. Or <laughs> oh boy, specialty. I, I can't. Uh, I would also <laughs> like to watch them, even if I. <laughs> Even if I fail this hard, Torek the lawman. Torek suddenly goes, according to ancient Ismondian law, as of the year <laughs> 278, pirates were tried on a three by three basis, and only they were allowed to live if they were, bef- were able to prefer uh, rites of passage, showing us that they were noble at some point. So, uh, 16. Hey, how's the 16? Oh. <laughs> Pretty good with mine. Wow. Have noble men that have gone wrong. <laughs> so do you have any skill I'm, I'm levels in mercenary. sailing? Uh, okay, what? mercenary. There you go. I was gonna. I'm trying to find some bases that you would know this. So based on yeah. mercenary and not necessarily uh, nautical mercenaries, which would be you know pi- uh, pirates, but um, you think they're probably going to? They'll probably try them. As Mondos is known to be quasi civilized kingdom, depending on the local lord. And uh, they'll probably give them a trial, but most likely they'll be, the pirate will probably be, I mean, the captain will probably be executed and probably publicly put on display. And the other guys will, might be sold into uh, indentured servitude. You think it's probably what's going to happen. It could also be that they're all executed, but. Hmm. Yeah, breakout might be fun. Captain, you're pretty sure will be done. Oh, and the fact that they're Crimson Skull, uh, they might actually all be executed. Uh, even more <laughs> reason to break them out. Despite the fact that most Crimson Skull pirates are Ismondians. <laughs> Torek, remember, who's, who's the captain now? <laughs> I got you. I got you. I see <laughs> those. I, I, I hear the hamster. That will be better good. I hear the hamster wheel turning in your head, Torek. What are you thinking? <laughs> By the way, let's take uh, let's take five, everybody. Sure. Five, we shall. Uh, I would like to input uh, Torek's comment uh, at this question of uh, he was a good fighter. That's all. Yeah, As he stares at them, walking off into the distance. Yes, Torek, and I put a hand on his shoulder. He was also going to try to kill us all. Then you wouldn't. <laughs> good times. And that's a good uh, in, uh, chapter end. So, <laughs> so let's all, t- uh, so audience, we're going to take five and we'll be back after a bio break. All right. See you guys in a bit.
Heavy sigh. Indeed. <laughs> Madison comes along like this. <laughs> drinking, drinking wine or vodka, looks like. Straight, I should have known. Uh, oh, yes. Vodka <laughs> called spring water. So yes. good. I have sparkling ice water. Nice. That's quite good. What? Tap water. <laughs> <laughs> is Ian back? Yes. I am was. definitely back. There he is. Doric. Son of Dragnar, <laughs> son of Torek, Torak. Wait, what? Oh no, I froze. Okay. <laughs> I almost froze. I was in the process of freezing. I like in the ep last episode of Winston of Cylindor, I would deliver bad news to Madison and she like would freeze. <laughs> it happened like twice. You're it like, did. oh no, what happened? You're like, kind of like Matt. I know, it was, it was that like. <laughs> moments i'm like <laughs> <laughs> you're like you okay <laughs> oh it was um uh, and uh your black bear your uh your bear takes 11 points of damage and you're like <laughs> frozen but you were actually frozen like your bit image was frozen yeah it was both both internet and just in, in general yeah i'm very protective of that bear <laughs> and of my what is oh. it called again Le vonk you're a vonk, yeah, a v. Vonk, yes. A f a n c k, but the f is pronounced like a v. I need to figure out how to take him. Oh, vonk. Me. I skated one of those. I have carrying a pelt with me right now. I like how in one campaign somebody skinned one, and the other is has been befriended. <laughs> we didn't have any girls with us to, to befriend it, so. <laughs> yeah, because it can only it can only travel in like as long as it has like some source of water. Yeah. So. Yep. You were, you were in Greymoor for a while, the marsh, so now you're getting towards dry land. So even if I got the monstrous companion, I wouldn't be able to take him with me, right? No, I mean, he would he, he, he would stay wherever you leave him, and you could go back to him, but unless you figure out some way to create a giant aquarium. Or, <laughs> or create a spell where he can breathe on land and like survive on land. Yeah. But, but kind of like the breath of the deep spell, but for mm. for uh, sea creatures. Mm. Yes. Though all his abilities would pretty much be shot. It can hold its breath for a while, but it's not more than like fifteen minutes. Yeah. I okay, just... audience, we're back, and players. <laughs> we're talking about a different campaign. Check out the Windstone of Cylindor. We're talking about all of them. But this is episode six of Dark Tides, Savage Kingdom's Dark Tides, which we will be going back to. All right. So uh, Torek was watching them um, kind of march off, and he has decided what their fate is most likely based on a lore skill roll. And 
what else do y'all do? So it's not quite sunrise here in the harbor. You've got your ship moored. Pirate ship is still there. We can uh, pass time a little quickly if you want here. We're definitely going to try to sell the ship, but if it's really early, probably no one's awake yet to sell it to. Mm -hmm. Now he did go off the, uh, he has in the uh, uh, captain and his four men went off to presumably try to find out if this ship was available, if anybody needed it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I probably will look around myself though, just to see if there's, you know, like for instance, like getting tools to remove the thing off of it to get on our ship or even selling our ship for a better ship. Okay. Uh, you want to do, so you want to look around? There is a shipyard that you can see it when the sun starts coming up in about 45 minutes. You can see a sharp shipyard just kind of around the, the coast a little bit down. Okay. And uh, there looks like there's ships being built and there's a couple that are probably already finished and haven't been commissioned to anyone yet. Okay. I will mm. spend this free time doing that. I will tell the crew... <laughs> Well, I'm going to have half the crew stay on the ship um, to guard oh. it. Um, and then they could do shifts if they want to go on land as well. Then the other half of the crew will switch with them. Um, okay. Do whatever they want. Okay. Uh, but all, all the, the PC players, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, do, what, do whatever you want. We'll be here. How long do we stay in port? Until I get a price on this other ship or get us a new ship. Okay. And Malik says, uh, as quartermaster, I'll stay here and make sure they give us a good deal, make sure nobody steals anything off the ship. I'll go get a light. I'll go get another ballista. <laughs> Very well. well. <laughs> just, let, just let him do. Turek pulls out like 30 silver and hands it to the captain. Me? Yeah. <laughs> you just out of a pouch. He 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 pulls out thirty and like hands it out to you. And what does he doesn't say a word, he just looks at you. But it's silver. Considered money. I had almost forgot about the coins. I know. All right, here we go. Resolve. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. No. <laughs> And most silver <laughs> coins in this day and age are, are mostly pure silver. I mean, they're worth their weight in silver. Unlike pennies nowadays, which are 99.9% .9 zinc. All right. Mm, yeah. 17. By weight. Hmm? 17. 17. Oh, yeah. Missed it I have three. silver on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you keep it a, apart from your person, like you're okay. But like when he holds it out to you, like you, uh, Torek notices that she recoils a little bit from it. Torek, why are you extending a bag of silver to me? This is some of the silver I found in the vase. Okay. And you're giving it to me? I don't need it. She will very carefully. Should I keep it? No, no. I will. And then Mark would make a fantastic treasurer for this ship and crew. Yeah. Elect him now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never have to worry about uh, the the uh, the money getting into the wrong hands. And it, our, and it comes with a guardian so already. Too. Like, like carefully take it and be like. No, no, this isn't in a bag. Like, he has pulled oh. out what he oh. thinks is roughly 30 silver coins oh, just okay. in plain view in his hand. He's like probably holding them out. Yeah. yeah. Um, hmm. And Marichka uh. recoils a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> do I, wait, do I have a bag that I can like <laughs> At least a belt pouch, I would guess, right? Uh, okay, I'll have like a belt pouch and I'll be like, would you would you prefer some gold? At which point he'll start ruffling through a bag. Yes, gold is actually better now that you mention it. 
<laughs> he puts the silver away and then pulls out three gold coins. Yes, I will take those. And she like quickly takes them before he can question. <laughs> These are a lot more comfortable. Is it payday? Is that... <laughs> yeah, the, the crew is kind of looking over like, dang, I wish we got some gold. Are, are we getting... Are, is it... <laughs> Is, is today, Light of hand into the pouch. Is today payday that we are all getting paid <laughs> and having spending money to go on? Hi, hey, Captain. Uh, I'm with, uh, uh, is it Kadir? Yes. Uh, the crew and I were wondering uh, if we're ever getting paid and uh, how much and that sort of thing. I, I, mean, oh, Malik, I know, I know we haven't had all that, that information. Far. I know we you haven't said that far that. yet, but you know, we're Mal just wondering. Y yes, Malik will give you all that information. We have the money just... Oh, He's hi. the oh. one in charge of that. I don't. I don't do money. No. Uh, after hearing I that, Torek will go it. to Malik. All right, Malik is down uh, below decks, like uh, looking over the captured pirate weapons. In fact, he actually, when you walk in, Torek, because I assume you're not sneaking in, he turns around, looks up at you, and he's like, "Oh, wow, uh, good. I was going to talk to somebody about this. Uh, these are the pirates' weapons. I wonder if we should try to sell them, or do you want to keep them? Maybe arm the crew with them." Mm -hmm. Torque shrugs. So I've, I've just come to three sabers, ask you, two short swords, and four daggers, and uh, two crossbows. I've just come to ask you what we should do with the money you gotten from the other ship. Oh, I guess we need to pay, pay the crew eventually, but uh, the way I look at it in Azeria, we used to just pay everybody every week instead of per voyage. But, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not the she-captain. <laughs> she's, she's behind me, isn't she? Okay. Actually. I'm just going out to the uh I'm just gonna go out to town to get a ballista. Of course you are. Uh wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I sold the last one. It was broken. Do it, do, uh, I'm going to get a new one? one. I mean we got a catapult. I guess it's good to have two if we're gonna be a warship. As for me though, I'm gonna if the captain uh, gives me a leave, I'm gonna go maybe perform at a Certainly, there's got to be a tavern or two or in. Oh, in that's right. Carellos. Do you think there'd be anyone anywhere he here that uh, I could do a little brawling for coin at? And Torque will kind of rub his index and thumb together as he says that. Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't. I've never been to this place. I don't know much about the western shore <laughs> here. Maybe. Okay. I guess you could go start a fight. Oh, oh. Maybe you could. Uh, <laughs> maybe you could fight while I play. Oh, All right. Ah, uh, that classic brawl. <laughs> brawl I'll, and break I'll look in. for you. Yes. Torek says as he walks off. <laughs> brawl room dancing, as it were. <laughs> Everybody was brawl room dancing. So you. All right. So Torek wanders off. The, uh, the gates of Corellus, uh, so the harbor is kind of like outside the, the main city gates, but it looks like the, the gates are just now being opened for uh, the mercantile day. So Torek times it just right. And uh, by the way, Orlando, com Orlando comes up to you, uh, Marishka, and he's like, uh, so if we are staying here overnight, I will go secure uh, uh, rooms at an inn, if you wish. We could but do that. Are we? St I do not know how long we are staying. Honestly, I don't know either. On, I'm going to try to make a deal, maybe get rid of these two ships for a better one. But well, also that is another reason I have come. If we are traveling from here, we will have to travel over a bit of water. But we uh, we can go overland from here if you wish. We could go to uh, Antaros or Carlitos on the way to Avaro, or we could follow the river past the ruins of Balos. I know I'm, these places you probably do not know what uh, what I speak of, but no, I don't. And where are they currently talking about this? Uh, probably on the upper deck. Okay, because Torx's gonna come looking for uh, the local Osmandian. And what would which way would be quicker? I would prefer yeah, to stay on water as long as we can. Well, in that case, um, Corvelos is the best deep water port uh, north of Santagos. Santagos is the city of Santago, which is the sea god of Osmandos. And it was the capital of King Santo, the rightful king of Osmandos. But apparently there is war that has been happening. 
So I do not know if Santago will be sieged or if it is all right. Gosh. I'm sorry that this is happening. I have no idea. To Can this boat war. take to the river? There are rivers, are there not? Can we not sail up river? The um hmm, the Argentus River might be we might be able to sail a little ways, but then it gets a bit difficult. Hmm. I don't think so. Where do we go after we deliver you to Avaro? Are we going back on the sea? Well, that's for all for you to decide. Uh, I will. I will remain at home. I am sure. I, I've enjoyed your company, but I'm. I do have a wife to return to. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you want to stay, stay with us ruffians. <laughs> there is that. You may stay with my estate, though. For I mean, my 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 place for a while, if you wish. Mm. It is a lovely place. I have a, a vineyard, and I have horses. <laughs> I once had a Matika horse. But uh, it got loose. Very sad story. Unfortunate. <clears throat> it was very valuable. Very fast. Very fast horses. Well, I guess I... we should all decide. We'll decide what we do after we drop our friend Orlando off later. For now, we need to decide how we get there. Well, that is me, Orlando. What is it? Is it worth <laughs> selling or buying another ship if we're not going to stay on the ocean? Well, that's what that's why I'm saying we should settle this now before I make a deal with anyone. Well, the, there is another thing I can offer. Uh, I can just go about my way. I can certainly hire men to take me there. I was just wanted to reward you for getting me this far. Yes, we're, we're going to go with you. We want that reward. Very well. No. I mean, I do have a few coins to give you, but I can give you much more for if you come to uh, Avaro. Yes. We come all this way. We might as well get the bigger reward. No, no, no. I just thought I'd tell you if you wanted to stay at sea, I could be on my way. That's fine. Well, so if we were to dock whatever ship we keep here and take a smaller ship to the mainland, obtain horses i assume got horses and then ride to your estate then return here to reclaim the ships if that is the plan of course and they will probably charge you uh, a bit to to dock it that long but i can help out with that if you wish well, there's the least i can do i mean i am a I do enjoy the sea, but I would not mind seeing more of this strange land. It is a so. beautiful country, but I'm afraid it is at war. But I do not, do not know how far the war is extended. It certainly cannot be that much. Well, seems like that. Hey, is Orlando. See. Si. Do you know anywhere I might be able to? Use my fists for some coin. Torque will call as he comes up from the bowels of the ship. Oh, there you are. I thought I heard you miles away. Uh, <laughs> probably. I do not know Corrales as well as Avaro, but um, uh, I have heard that Corrales has a bit of a ruffian streak, that it is so far removed from the capital of Osmondos that it is a bit of a rough house. So you probably could find such a thing. I could go find out, my, but I, I do not wish to fight, but I can find out for you if you wish. I'm going into Please town do. anyway. To, uh, yes. I think I will I'm all Malik. rested up and ready for another roust about. Very well, I will find out for you. The, uh, we as Mondians prefer um, more civilized ways of fighting, uh, such as the sword, the estop. But uh, eh, certainly we'll find some more ruffian willing to uh, bet a few coins on... Uh, I don't know, a bout in the middle of an alleyway or something. <laughs> Seek to fight in the pits, perhaps you should head farther east. And with Kadir, that? Kadir is right. If you go to the Laurentian Empire or the Pridonian Island, some of them, you will find things called arenas or stadia. And they have oh. like, uh, these organized fighting. I have heard of them. 
What I, I he's he turned his money in for a second. I have heard of those. Torres. Si. Always wish to see one and join. I think you would do well. You would do very well, probably. Although I don't know about it in character, we also have that treasure map that, with the treasure in Mirga. Yeah. So you yeah. guys have lots of story leads, that's for sure. <laughs> <coughs> so I mean, let's... I... Oops, sorry. Oh, I was about to say, I mean, we... I feel like we should take Orlando home and then we huh? can do all that stuff. Yeah, but my thought, I'm just wondering, do we leave the ships here, try to sail to Santago and dock the ships there and, and go overland that way? Because um, He does say he, he thinks you can sail far enough upriver uh, to a place called Antaros. Okay. And, which is right here. So we could do that then. He's and not then... real sure, but or There's you could just leave it there and travel all the way overland. I mean, the farther we sail, the less docking fees we have to pay. Um, yeah. And the quicker we can be out back at sea, if that is our plan. So. Yeah. Yep, I like that idea. So I would say travel. We we sail to Antaros, and that would be my advice as navigator. See. I think I think the river is big enough to take a ship all the way to Antares, possibly even to Casa Quandros, but I, I do not know if I would trust it. No. Casa Quandros uh, is the uh, secondary um, capital of um, King Santos. It's a beautiful place, but if war is happening, we may not wish to get that close to it. So I we keep know. this ship and sail it, and we sell the other one. Yes. All right. Sounds like a plan. <sighs> See. Speaking of which, not long after this conversation, like 15 minutes, you see that uh, now the sun is now full, fully up. It's now fully dawn. The city gates have opened. Uh, the ports come alive. You see stevedores out loading ships and shipbuilders off in the distance. You can hear them tapping, smacking on wood, uh, hammer and nail and pegs just to go in. And um, so uh, you see the that guard captain approach with his other the same four guys that were with him, and he's like, uh, "Ah, uh, Captain Marichka, I have returned. Nice to see you again. Ah, as are you. So, I have found a buyer for the ship. Mm -hmm. Lord Rialto of Caralos himself wishes to uh, this pirate ship. He at first wanted to burn it to the uh, waterline." which he still might, but he's willing to pay for that right to do so. Oh, how much is he willing to pay for it? He's coming to investigate, uh, perhaps in the next hour or so. Oh, well, I guess we'll just be here then. I mean, you do not all have to, of course, if you wish, but yes. See, um, we will watch your vessels if you need to go into the city for any reason. That's quite kind of you. Well, everyone, Go forth. The crew's like, ah. Business. Some people want to hit taverns. Others are like, not too jonesing because you've only been at sea for like two days since the first port. Yeah. <laughs> but still, some people want to stretch to get their land legs back. Um, I might go into port. town just to, just to explore a bit and to take in the new culture. Although I don't speak the language, so I won't be doing yeah. much unless I happen to see something that catches my eye. But. So Kadir and Torek are going into town. Do y'all go together? I'll go with them, yeah, because keep want to keep them out of trouble, or at least try to. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go separately to find some, like, either potions or, like, magical things. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Although, <laughs> I don't speak... <laughs> <laughs> he only speaks Pigeon Brithian, and neither of us speak as Mandian, so this will be interesting. Oh, By the way, Torek... Torque has walked off in search of a ballista by now. Okay. I'm sure I he, he's not you. present. So Kadir is not traveling with Torek since not. Torek has already left. I should go fight. To fight. Unless Kadir would like to join Torek in search of a. Uh... I'll I'll end up probably catching up to y'all because I'll you, you'll probably stick out for a bit. You're not small, and I can see him <laughs> yeah. for a bit. <laughs> you, can, you can spot him for a ways until you get yeah. to the crowds or the more narrow streets. Yeah, and even then, I'm taller than everybody else here, too, so I can kind of see everybody's head to see his. You're 6'3", right? 
I'm six foot two. Yes, I'm. I'm Schwartz, short. I'm short for Jan, but. Like six seven, I believe, or something like yeah. that. Okay, so I better go and keep Torek out of trouble. Yeah, you so. tower. Both of you tower over most of the locals. You see a few outlanders here in Karel, as you might imagine, because it's right on the. But not as many as you would think. It looks to be mostly locals. Um, and you notice that the city's pretty nice. Like it's pretty. It's not that huge, but it's very clean. And it seems to be that a lot of people that live here have some measure of decent wealth, even like the commoners. And um, so it's almost like a little hidden gem out here on the island. And it almost seems to be its own kind of thing. Like the people speak as Mondian, but there's almost kind of a weird sort of accent to it. And uh, maybe it's a mix of Kimrethi or Brithy, and it's kind of hard to tell. But so, but you, you know, it's just a dialect thing. If you speak as Mondian, you speak as Mondian and you understand them. So, what's Marichka going to do? Is she going to hang out at the ship and wait for this guy to come? Um, well, how long did they say it would take for the he guy? Said he to would get- be here in an hour, within yeah. the hour. Oh, within the hour. Yeah. Ooh, I probably shouldn't leave then. Oh. I'll I'll go exploring later then. So I okay. miss him. All right. So Torek, make a perception roll to see if you see a siege weapon yard, or if you want to ask somebody, that would be persuasion. <laughs> As Kadir tries to follow you through the crowd. Is 20 good enough? 20 is good enough if it exists. So If it um, exists. Oh, boy. <laughs> if there's such a place. So, let's see. What is good? Let's see. Oh, it is mostly mo- mo- shipbuilding. Um, you, you go to the right place. Eventually, you start seeing lumber yards and shipyards. And then you see a place that uh, it's wagons. And then... Um, and then you realize that one of the places that produces uh, some of the wagons is also apparently produces some siege weaponry. So you do, in fact, after about 20 minutes, find a place that, that um, sells ballistas, catapults, battering rams. And it looks like they can even fit a ship for, uh, with a battering ram made of bronze or even iron. Hmm. You still there? Okay, there is. Take me a while to catch up to him because I'm slower than he is. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Torek's going to take a while to think about it. Kadir, make a perception roll. <laughs> if you would. Oh, well, my first good roll of the night. Okay. Even that. And, and all that was was to keep track of uh, Tor- yeah. uh, Torek. Yeah. Uh, you still you still see him. You see this big uh, his ugly ass head traveling through the, <laughs> the big frost giant. You see his helmet. You see the horns of axe. his helmet going up. Mm-hmm. He's, he's wearing his helmet. He's and, getting and that the plus frost one giant renown. axe that you have uh, towering yep. over you. You, know? you see pretty much all that above everyone. Yeah, I completely forgot about my helmet giving me a boost to intimidation. Oh, That's yeah, all right. plus one, right? Yeah, so that means that it's five. <laughs> yeah, plus six. All right, so yes, I will. I will kind of hurry up. You know, kind of moving a bit faster to to so uh, you, catch up to him. Quicken your pace. You yeah, yeah. you catch up to him. Through, you, a couple people dodge out of your way. Like, hey, where are you going? But yeah. No big deal. Don't speak a minute. Don't speak a minute. And so don't know what they're saying, but I can get the gist. <laughs> <laughs> So you catch up to him at right. this uh, the shipyard sort of uh, wagon maker. Hmm. Okay, and you were talking about uh, what kinds of metals for it? I was saying you could. Uh, they, they sell battering rams to fix two ships, but also uh, catapults, ballistas. Um, it looks like there's a siege tower being built out in the yard as well. Have one of those on the ship. That'd be awesome. In other words, <laughs> no, no. smells like war. Four of four Torix can carry one siege tower. I've done the math. We only have one. Oh, okay. You can quarter, carry a quarter of it. <laughs> I don't just like cut it up, start cutting at it. Um, I walk up to someone in, in my helmet. Um, well, I guess I should. I don't speak the language. Ooh. The deer is with you, though. I speak Brithian. Oh, better than right, you. Isn't. So 
What is it? You you look to buy a siege weapon, yes? Ballista or a catapult? I look to buy a light ballista, hopefully one that I could maybe uh, easily remove from the affixations to the deck so as to use it as a crossbow. You use big words for pigeon brithian. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't caught up yet, so so that's why. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Considering caught up now. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Well, let us see if uh, what they have to offer. Then I do not know if they speak Brithian, but I may be able to make our case better than you, perhaps. And you do see uh, two two men approaching a man and a somewhat younger man, probably really just a older boy, private apprentice. Mm. They come over kind of curiously looking at both of these tall people, especially with the <laughs> massive horned helmets. Uh, I, I kind of bow in the in the Jan way, oh. whatever whatever greeting I would normally do. For, I don't know what they're... When Kadir greeting. shows up, uh, <laughs> Twerk will nod at Kadir. It's like a third eye touch and then yeah. a, oh. just kind of where the Assyrians and the yeah. Zeremis kind of from. <laughs> so, uh... <clears throat> they just kind of nod and then yeah. strangely enough, it's the older, the boy starts to speak instead of the older man. Like doing the negotiating. Greetings. That... Uh, Hello. Greetings. My father wants to know why why you are here. We seek a. I was in this Mandian, but uh, uh, Torek says, "Bolista," uh, in Brithi in Brithian. Ah, uh, Brithian, and he starts speaking Brithian, yeah. uh, almost better than his Mandian. Yes. Yes, seek... of course. Yes, ballista. He seeks a light ballista that can be. Easily removed. And oh, well, I don't know. Torque father. wouldn't explain. Would, Torque would not have uh, told you this in character yet. Oh, okay. So that's why I asked you in character. So I thought. Oh, I okay. Sorry. 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 I am looking <clears throat> for a light ballista. He would have said. Oh, what is uh, what we would consider a light ballista? Uh, we have one already made, but I'm afraid. Uh, he keeps looking at his father. Yes, father. Um, father keeps nodding. Like you get a signaling the father doesn't even speak. Maybe he's mute or something. But the boy sees you interpret what the father says, and he's like, "I'm, I'm afraid, though, uh, almost everything we're bu- being built is being um, what is the word in birth- uh, common, uh, common, commandeered uh, for the war by uh, King, King Santos himself, or at least uh, one of his dons, his lords." Uh, but um, yes, father, of course. If if you're willing to pay double, we can yeah we can ignore this fact. Hmm. It would be 70 uh, silver uh, Argentos as silver pieces. I look to... Oh, I was expecting sure. 90. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I was looking at the maximum damage statistic, not the cost. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Almost. Almost got so, away with it. So, Almost I got away. A, I take that offer. I was wondering, I'm like, God, it seems... Who wrote these damn rules? That seems really low. <laughs> Cost is a hundred, so two hundred for a light ballista. Yeah, unless you want to haggle him down. Or four hundred for a heavy ballista. Ooh. Your haggler though is back at the ship. Yeah, I could try, but I'm not that great at it. So, twice the price to. Yes, I, I, I am very sorry if that is uh, the main reason you have come. You could always try to haggle. I will. T- Surely such a price is, if it is already built, if the king does not know it exists, he does not know it is sold. Uh, that is true. Uh, make a persuasion. <laughs> he, he uh, to his quiet father. Yes. If it is, <laughs> Jadishma, let it be. Come on, Jadishma. Fuck you, Jadishma. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, we just gotta get a break. My rolls. I had the one good roll. He looks ah. at his father, father like No, nah, my father says uh he is the master builder here. I'm afraid we must have uh two hundred of gentles. But he does say that is uh or twenty golden pieces, if that is easier. Twenty does that goros. come with bolts for it. Uh looks at his father. Oh uh, yes. Uh my father says uh he will throw in uh, twenty of them a score. That seems like a fair deal, actually. Uh, Torek will say in... He'll say in Norish first. Uh, well, no, actually, he'll, he'll whisper in uh, in Brithian, I have 200 silver. 
to use here? To the child you whisper, or the boy? No, no, to Kadir. Uh, yeah. Kadir, uh, Then that is what their asking price is, so the ballista and 20 bolts for that cost perhaps is not too bad. My father says if you need to come back, we, we can hold it for um, half a day. If you... But... Hmm. I, Torek will say in Brithian, is there a way that you can make it, um, and he stops and thinks, I want to be able to use it while it's on the ship, as well as take it with me off the ship. So you wish it mounted, but also where it is able to be dismounted. There are yes. um, wheels uh, that we have made some with wheels on them. And then you could chain them to the ship. That is the easy mm. one. I seek to carry it. I'm sorry? <laughs> 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 yeah, it's bulk 24. <laughs> Just nothing to um, <laughs> is is there are there any uh, of these like of these ballistas lying in near vicinity? Uh, yeah, the one that you're actually that they're talking about seems to be not too f far behind them, like twenty yards. Is is there anyone working on it at the moment? There's a guy kind of sanding it down, like kind of polishing it up, and that's uh, that's yeah about it. Just one person. Uh, and that all right? Torque Torque points at it. That is one of them, right? Oh, see, that is actually the one in question. Torek uh, walks over to it, begins to begins to walk over to it. Uh, uh, Senor, slowly. <laughs> I, I I believe he wants to inspect it. Father just nods, kind of calmly, like that's cool. Let, let him do it. And uh, so they kind of follow Torek over there. Kiri is like, "What are you doing?" Okay, so 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 does this look the, like the, the man kind of that's thing the I man that's planing it down just kind of looks up, sees you, and just kind of <laughs> drops the tool and kind of backs away. <laughs> This, so, so this is this is in fact just to clarify something that I could pick up and hold and fire on my own, correct? Uh, what well, is your physique? You could fire it every other round, and it yeah, every other round. Yeah, and it's a team of two normally. So if you hmm. do it by yourself, it doubles the time. So you could fire it every four rounds. Ha! Huh. What is your physique? <laughs> four. All right, so you'd be hindered carrying it. Yeah, I'd be hindered. That's it. But not burdened. <laughs> but not burdened. <laughs> it's like 24, right? Yeah. 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 I can... <laughs> <laughs> Your physique's plus four, right? Yeah. Mm, okay, maybe maybe wheels would be better. <laughs> I can carry it and then other people can use it. I can just like set it down and then others will use it. <laughs> hmm. Do you notice there that it doesn't have wheels on it yet, but the, the boy does do say, we, if you wish wheels, it will, it will take a day, perhaps less. Do we need wheels? I mean, would it not be better just mounted on the ship? If it's mounted to the ship, then I can't take it with me. That is massive. Why would you want to take it with you? My father Defense. says if you want the wheels on it, it is the same price. 200. Oh. Uh, but it's your money, I guess. I'm not sure where you got it from, but I will not gaze it. He also wants me to tell you that if this is tomorrow, that it will be gone. That the armies of King Santos will have picked it up. So there is that. Can you haggle them down at all? He'll whisper. I tried and no. <laughs> <laughs> What might be some consequences of attempting t intimidation here? <laughs> Getting arrested? <laughs> okay, probably. Yeah, I mean, they could call for the guards to watch, or maybe not. Not know. ever selling it to you? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> oh, that's problematic. Or maybe not. I mean, you're getting twenty. You get, you're getting the ballista itself and twenty bolts for it. So. And wheels, if you want them. And wheels. <laughs> but it's all of the silver. I don't have. I won't have anything after that. There, that I'll, after that, I'll only have good wine, and then there won't be any money to pay for the people. 
or to pay. Yeah, we had hundred. We had a hundred silver coins that we got from the pirate ship. Then we have another three to four hundred bronze coins we got. Well, so I got hundred and fifty have... from. I got. I got the silver coins from the pirate ship. I know. I'm saying. I know. We had the one fifty there, so you probably have another fifty that you had on your own. From yeah. Selling the first ballista. And then we have another three to four hundred bronze coins, which is really thirty to forty silver in actual value. So we have some money left over, and we're also selling, and we're also selling the other ship. So that's another income there as well. So I'm so. gonna I'm gonna cut scene back to Marichka really quick. Okay. So y'all can figure that out, or you can yeah. even talk about it, or type or type in chat. Yeah. So uh, Marichka, meanwhile, you didn't. You only waited about thirty minutes, and you see, uh, uh, it looks like six men approaching, or six men and a woman. The woman is actually very well dressed, and she's a bit snooty. Um, oh, she's boy. walking with a man, not quite as well dressed, but you assume maybe that's her, her husband or mate or whatever. And he just kind of walks on, and she's kind of like, uh, "Oh my dear, um." Is this the pirate ship that my husband wishes to look at? Are you the Capitan? Yeah. It's yeah. right over there. Yeah, very well. Crimson Skull pirate ship. My uh, husband will, um, will examine it. Perhaps we will be interested. By I'm curious. Means. How did you come by this ship? Well, they chased us. We tried to outrun them. And then we couldn't, so we captured it. Well done. I like you. You have spunk. Oh, thank you. You are uh, an inspiration for girls of his manos, perhaps. <laughs> well, that's yeah. very good to say. Of course. My husband will not take long. I mean, always oh. looking at things before they decide to buy. Oh, I know, right? I wish to warn you, if he buys it, he may just burn it to the waterline um, in a public display to show that uh, pirates are not welcome here. I mean, as long as he's giving me the money, I really <laughs> don't care what he does with it. Well said, my dear. I would think the same thing. But it has a quaint charm to it, does it not? It, hmm. it does. Now, I'm... I'm curious, why wouldn't he want to use the materials of the ship for this upcoming war? I hear that that's happening. Uh, between you and me, my dear, um, my husband wishes not to get involved. Mm. We here in Corellus, we are far removed from the silliness of the two kings. And that is wise. But if King Santos calls, then technically he is earthbound to him and must leave, but... My husband has a, an old injury. Sometimes he can use that as an excuse. Stay home with me and make children. <laughs> well, I hope for your husband's sake and your sake that you are not called to war. I, I will not go, but uh, but I thank you. Ah, here he comes. And so, uh, and you you actually kind of notice for the first time this this man kind of has a slight limp, and he comes up to you and he's like, "Oh, you must be the Capitan." Indeed, uh, I am. Oh, she, Captain, that is very good. I am willing to give you, if you wish, a dear wish coin for the ship. Or do you wish to trade something? I hope it is coin. It's so much easier to deal with. Coin. Ah, very good. Or jewels, even. Uh, but the ship is uh, it's not bad. It is seen the better days, but uh, I'm very interested in it. Um, I am willing to give you, perhaps, shall we say... 20 pieces of gold. 20 goros. Um, can I check to see if that's a good price? That sounds really good. So <laughs> <laughs> sounds but good, right? It sounds good. Yeah, make a sailing or crafting roll, whichever you're better at. Okay, that would be sailing. Natural 20. Oh nice. holy crap. Roll another 20. 20. <laughs> Get to roll again and add. So, 27. Wish that, that was might be a roll critical. that I'm about to do. <laughs> so critical success, actually. So it's obvious that you yourself built this ship a long time ago. And uh, <laughs> you know exactly how much it's worth. 
Yes. No, you, you've, uh, for some reason, you've got a good beat on this ship. This would be considered a, it's not a warship because that'd be worth a lot more. This would be considered a Carrick or a Cog. Okay. Uh, and brand new, they're worth 500 silver, 50 gold. So being used and being, was used as a pirate ship, 20 is probably actually not, it's actually pretty decent, you think. Well, actually, you know for sure because you crept. <laughs> yeah. I'm just wondering, would it be worth trying to haggle? Because he's going to burn it. <laughs> That's just what she said. But she seems to be a bit of a gossip. That's fine. <laughs> helps, helps me. <laughs> wonder what her main talent is. <laughs> <laughs> Other than highborn. <laughs> hmm. Oh, wow. What do I want to do? I mean, I I do have a haggling special. Well, you could think about it and uh, get in touch with me later on. It is not a big pressing matter, although the red skull uh, sail in the middle of my harbor is probably not my favorite thing, but, you know, it brings the tourists. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't think I'm going to lose money doing this, so <laughs> I will haggle. I will say, <laughs> you know, it took a lot of effort to get this ship. It it almost took my crew out, but we fought strong and true. And we are quite low on money, actually. Lost some resources to this. Perhaps, could you raise your price just a little bit higher? And Make I will. persuasion. Haggling specialty, she finally gets to use it. I know, I'm excited. Hopefully I don't get a crit fail. And sucks, so it doesn't matter. You got one of my rolls. <laughs> it's fine. A ten. That's fine. He's just like he just kind of as he's as you're telling your story, it looks like he just kind of like glazes over almost, and he's like, "I'm afraid my price is very, very far and very, very fair. I can always uh, lower the price if you wish." That's fine. It's I will take the twenty gold. <laughs> very well, of course, of course. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you gotta look. Juanita, Juanita, give the lady the, the money. You're the one that has it. You're the one if you go to want to go to the marketplace and buy things. Go pay the woman. So the woman returns and like, oh, dear, so it seems that he has decided. Um, he said twenty goros. That is uh, his money in gold coins. And she counts them all out. They're all shiny. You could tell they probably never never even been circulated. Oh. Yep. Shiny gold, <laughs> 20 gold coins, 200 silver. All right. Well, have fun burning the ship. I hope that the public display instills fear into all crimson skulls that happen to see it. Indeed, I, my husband does not like them. Secretly, I think he admires them, actually. He just pretends that he does not like them. I'm coming, dear. I must go. <laughs> I am going to the marketplace. I do not get out that much. Good day. Um, oh, uh, my, my uh, husband says to leave the ship there. He will send uh, his men and servants to undo the ship and uh, put it in a proper berth before it is set to the fire. Very good. Pleasure to have business. Good day. Gracias, my lady. And they head off. Um, they step off the pier into the water and you do not see them again. All right, so they. <laughs> what a strange, what a strange exit! <laughs> what an odd exit! <laughs> and they evaporate. Exit pursued by sharks. So back to the <laughs> siege weapon yard. Torque is brooding, thinking about leaning in heavy and like it'll be 150 silver, no less, or whatever he's about to do. If he got us there. Ah. There he is. <laughs> I, say we accept I zoned out hard. <laughs> okay. 150? Are you trying to bargain him down to that? Is, is that what he said? 150? No, he said, no, he said 200. Yeah. <clears throat> 200. You don't, I don't know. What do, you, what do you, out of character, what do you think? I say go for it. I mean, 
it's all right. Fair enough. We I get, can make money fighting we, we people. Get, and we get bolts as well, so it's not like we're getting nothing for it. All right. Turek will take this pouch in which he is all of his all of his silver in, pull it out, and drop it on the table. Okay. The... I think you mean what pouch? You've been pickpocketed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. The boy looks at him, he's like, there is nothing but air. And no, he looks at him. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, he looked, shows it to his father. You notice that he does not recoil from it like Marichka some, for some reason did. And uh, this is actual silver too, right? Yes, these okay. are 200 silver coins that I've kept separate from my remaining bronze coins. Father looks at it. He kind of sifts through it a little bit, I guess, doing a rough count, and then he kind of nods, and the boy says, you have yourself a deal. My father wishes to know. However, do you wish the wheels, or do you wish it like it is? And we can also have it delivered, although it looks like you perhaps are capable of carrying it. Wheels. And Torek will nod. Very well. Uh, my father says we will need uh, five or six more hours. It could be quicker, but we are working on other things. That's good. Do you know of anyone I could... Do you know of anywhere I might fight for some coin? Fight for some coin? Um, he kind of looks at his father, and his father, for some reason, kind of does this no sign, like, don't tell him that crap. <laughs> 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 But Mark, the, we'll look at this father with don't a, encourage a, him eyebrow. Kadir shakes his head no as well. Don't encourage him. <laughs> when, you, when you do that to the father, the father actually kind of leans in. He makes a couple of weird sign, like it apparently speaks in some kind of form of some kind of made up sign. Maybe it's shadow speech for all you know. And the boy <laughs> kind of nods and says, uh, well, actually, uh, my father says, um, there is a, a place uh, the outskirts of Karelos on the island uh, to the north that sometimes the nobles and the soldiers go off to fight. It is uh, a training ground. That, uh, he says, my father says that there is a time where other people gather and uh, they wager on uh, sword fighting. <laughs> but perhaps there could be um, brawling as well. I, I do not know. Thank you. After that, Torek will... They, they meet once a week, I think. Sometimes twice. And by the way, my father says, remember the rule of Fight Club. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha, ha. Uh, ha. You had to encourage him, didn't you? Oh, boy. I don't know when the next one is, though, but perhaps in the next mm-hmm. day or two. But Thank you. See, and they I will return. get to work. They grab the silver and run off to the tavern and have a big old spree. Whoop. Sounds about right. <laughs> Anything you need, Kadir? I was just going to look and observe the local customs, look to fashion, see if anything struck my fancy as we go. And then perhaps we should look together. If you wish. To find it. Oh, that's right. So Marichka is now heading off. And I find nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is that per- oh, so you're not asked so perception? Okay. Yeah, you kind of wander through the streets. Of, it's a very, uh, it's a very, somewhat small but very quaint, pretty city. Nice buildings, mostly made of stone. Some woodwork, mostly stone and stucco. Uh, but you don't see anything that would be like an apothecary or an herbalist, at least with that role. <laughs> Can I make a perception roll for an armor shop? If you want to search for another half hour, you can also roll. Uh, sure, actually, yeah. So make another perception check. <laughs> you know how good of an armor I could have purchased with uh, that twenty, <laughs> that two hundred silver. A natural twenty. Well, a natural twenty from Marshka. Oh my god! I mean, you. Forty-three. So is, Forty-three. I- uh, not only do I find it, like I have found it. Like you I found you. You, rec- it. you recall putting in the keystone of this building <laughs> yourself. <laughs> up with this. <laughs> so this is where your smuggler talent. Uh, so not only do you f- see an armorer, but something about the sign, you're like, oh, this is uh, one of your contacts works here. 
critical effect. Yeah. We have, we have another contact. Here. Handy. Yep. Nice. Had nothing to smuggle though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, so, like I mean, a lot we of smugglers, go hunting like, the guy, the, the guy's an armor smith, but his other kind of thing on the side is uh, he smuggles things. So, and you've so, heard that. Um, so he, he he particularly likes to buy rare metals and turn rare metals into armor. Ooh, do I have any rare metals? He, he once mentioned silderil to you, something called something like star metal that comes from the sky, whatever that is. And then you mentioned something about some steel that Dwargar make that's kind of special. But other than that, high quality steel he kind of likes. But you know, he's also known to to fence other goods too. If you want it. Man, you know, I, I don't have anything to really smuggle though. So and it's getting close to eleven for Matt, especially for Matt's sake. So yeah. we have to. Well, well, I'll go in and catch up with with my pal. That with my I'm pal. With I may be chummy with. All right. <laughs> See if I can get some good armor. Or so you you know his name to be Raul, and you're not sure if that's his real name. Okay, Raul. And his mom some real good polishing. <laughs> yep. Hey there, Raul. He happens to be there. You see his back. He's wearing this leather uh, apron. When you walk in, he's got two apprentices working with him, and he turns around and he kind of looks at you, and he's like, "By Santago, I never thought I would see you again. Is it Marichka of Malovia? Wait, is that what you're going by? Yes, I haven't changed my name yet. Might have ah, to. Yes, such a fool. You must look into other names, my my sweet dear. Uh, what are you doing in his mandos? I have not seen you on this coast in five years. I'm delivering a person. You wish me to, to buy a person? I do not no, own slaves I, anymore. I <laughs> no, darling. It's more of a journey. For It benefits him. We're taking mm. him home. This is a... Wait, hold up. That's not kid-friendly. <laughs> wait, what just happened? Uh-huh. Ignore the ignore, the ignore that voices in, in the room. Ah, should have known. But seriously, who is this person that you wish to sell into captivity? I have considered <laughs> it. We're not selling him. It's unfortunate. Twist my arm, I'll do it. Unless, of course, he's a value to you. So who is this he we speak of? What is he? A captured nobleman who needs a hostage. I don't have the money to pay the hostage of a nobleman unless he's very low on it. I believe he actually is some sort of noble person. It was by Orlando. Orlando? Do you happen to know? Uh, I know of three Orlandos. I know 17. <laughs> Do you know his, does he have a surname? Does he have a title? Did he ever give his surname? <laughs> He's from Avaro. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, you could maybe say Orlando of Avaro. You actually remember his surname being something like D of R. It was like close to that. All right, I'll I'll tell him this information. It's like D of R. Oh yeah, it was. I forgot about that. So you get yeah, you tell when you say uh, Orlando Lord of Avaro. There is a, a Lord uh, a Lord Orlando of Avaro. Yes, that's the one. That is a real person. Wait, do you actually have the Don of Avaro? Yep. I mean, he's one of the Dons, and it's a big city. What? So, uh, what is it you're asking, my dear? What is it that you want for him? A suit of armor? No, no, I'm not saying to buy him. You just asked me what I was doing here, and I told you. Uh, I'm just I mean, here looking for armor, to be honest. I wasn't looking to smuggle anything. Not sure if I have anything of worth at the moment. It would not be the first time I have smuggled a person. Well, it's quite common in Malovia, so. Uh, I think you many and dark parents things about have done quite a bit of business. When it comes to people. So, why is it that you are here just to say hello? Hello. I'm very busy. Do you know how to swing a hammer? Do you know how to beat steel out into a breastplate? Actually, I was looking to buy something, possibly. Maybe some cousin bulky armor. It what? I'm sorry. I'm possibly <laughs> looking to get some new armor, actually. 
Ah, well, very good. So I do not deal, as you know, with much with leathers, mostly with uh, steel. But uh, what is it that you wish? A nice chain shirt, perhaps, to suit your figure? Perhaps a um, plate and chain, even, if you wish. Very expensive. Something that wouldn't burden me too much. Well, I can, I do not make the leathers, but I can find you some. Or do you wish uh, brigandine, leather with uh, rings on them and small plates? Sure, let's, <laughs> I need to, I need so, to know their, their uh, protection rating. Yeah, so he, well, he, he brings out three things to show you. One is padded gambeson, so padded armor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty nice. Padded armor can get kind of nasty because it gets body sweats and stuff, but this is yeah. like really clean, never been used. Then he shows you like hard leather okay. and uh, it's really well made too. It almost looks like, like it's, it's got leather pauldrons, almost like plate armor, it's just leather. Okay. And then he shows you the suit of brigandine he was talking about, which is uh, in this case, it's leather with rings and studs. Would this be I, uh... I could put under uh, the soft leather jerkin I already have. Oh, you already have a soft leather jerkin? Yeah. I was um, kind of looking for something to add on to that, if possible. Yeah, so the only armor that stacks is something less than itself, and then it's only half. So, yeah, you none of, none of this will really stack together. Unless you put your padded armor under Brigandine, it would work. I, uh, I do believe I have to skedaddle. I have sent oh. in my vote. Oh, you got it. Okay, we'll we'll wrap up here soon. One vote is in. Okay, yeah. so audience, so uh, uh, I mean, you guys can keep going, but I gotta skip. Okay, yeah, we're, 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 you won't miss much. We're gonna wrap up soon, Ian. All right, peace. Thanks, I, hope, I will see you all in a month. Night. Night see you Ian. tomorrow night or tomorrow night for your game. Oh yes, I will see you yes. tomorrow night. Cool. All right, see you, man. So, audience, uh, Torek is having to duck out for a second. So between us players and you since uh, Ian left. So Torek is actually about to die. So I just want to <laughs> let you guys know. Yeah. Mm, so <laughs> he has the doomed weakness. Nobody yeah. knows until now. <laughs> so no. So he's out for now. So we'll, we'll just wrap up really quick. Yeah. So uh, Marichka, you're still, you want to buy this anything? Well, mm. what is the protection rating on the most expensive one? Uh, so let's see. Armor is on. Dean is protection rating three, negative one mobility, negative two skill penalty. Would yeah. that be for like casting? I'm assuming. Yeah, any also, skill that has an asterisk next to it is affected. Yeah, That's including casting. Arts. Yeah, magical arts, stealth, acrobatics. So, unless you had, unless it was exceptional and you had armor acclimation, you would not want to wear brigandine because you would still have a, a penalty. All right, also slows you down. The armor he's showing you actually is all exceptional quality, which means the uh, the skill penalty is one less than what's listed. Okay. So there is that, but it does cost twice uh, the book price. So in other words, the brigandine is eighty, the hard leather is fifty, and the uh, padded gambeson is also fifty. Okay. Uh, so if you wore the padded gambus, the, the hard leather, that's a negative, a two protection rating, negative one skill penalty for 50 silver. Yeah. So it's one better than you have now at the same skill penalty. And he has a chain, chain mail shirt also, which is that would be a negative ability rating, but it's minus three skill, but it's negative, exceptional quality. So it only be minus two. Negative two. Yeah. Have they factored in the protection ratings so far? Have you had damage taken? Not much. I'm more of a distance fighter. That's why I'm like wondering if. Didn't a Kelpie get you one? No, I don't know. If, have you no. ever been injured? I at the very first episode I was injured. Okay, because I usually say you take five points of damage minus uh, protection minus armor or whatever, but uh, yeah. so you've had two points of armor. I feel like that did come in. I think we did. Consider your armor once. I think you've only been wounded once, though. <laughs> Which yeah. means you don't really need armor. <laughs> yeah, but I'm wondering, like, in case I do, and I am, I am in a situation. So that's the well, only you reason. You could always do it where you have it, and then you don it quickly if you really need it. Otherwise, not wear it all the time. Yeah. You know, which realistically is what 
most people would actually be doing. It's just people in tabletop role playing games usually don't do it that way. Yeah. But. Okay. Well, not to hold up the game or anything, but just just curious. Yeah, I mean, if, but if you want something, he may have some other things here too because he is a, also a smuggler, and it's, it's just not always uh, armor items. Yeah, I'm, I might ask him for whatever else he's selling. You want to keep in mind too that you, most people on the water don't want to wear heavier armor. Oh, I have something for you, Marichka. If you are worried about the bulky armor messing up your figure, I will show you something. And he turns around and takes something off the wall. It looks like a buckler, which is you know a small round shield. I have this. It is called a buckler. It is a small shield. You can get rid of it quickly. So it's in game terms, it's one extra point of armor. Madison. Hmm. Wait, do I have a buckler? You may, you may already have one. This is an exceptional quality one, though, so it wouldn't... No skill, no skill penalty. No skill penalty, yeah. So basically a free point of armor, if you, but it does take up a, a hand. Does casting involve two hands or only one? Uh, just you only need just one, yeah, at least one too. How much is it? <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry, I just turned the 20, page. Twenty. Is that the double price? Yeah. Yep. Twenty, 20 silver. That's not bad. Yeah. For free armor. Extra piece of armor just takes up a hand slot. That's about it. And it only takes a it only takes an action to, to arm yourself with it. Reaction to drop it if you never wanted to. I don't know why you would, but yeah. Alrighty, I guess we'll have it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, weird being like a sorcerer because it's like, do I need armor? I'm like, I I kind of need the magical kind of stuff more. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should have asked him for that. Oh, uh, he probably doesn't have any enchanted armor. You can ask him if you want. But I Do you have anything enchanted? <laughs> uh, no, I'm afraid. However, one time, not long ago, I had uh, what I think was an enchanted buckler like that, but that, that is not the one, I'm afraid. Oh. I'm not even sure. It had a rune scribed on it. It came from the north. Someone said uh, a runesmith, a Dwargar, made it, and there was some kind of magic in it. <laughs> but... I do have, it is not necessarily magical, I do have a master crafted uh, bit of armor that I would be willing to sell if you will. Master crafted? Do you tell? Much, much more expensive. Uh, I have a master crafted um, buckler like that, and I also have a uh, uh, master crafted chain shirt. Almost like magic, it is so good. Well, Master Crafter Buckler doesn't really do anything for you other than cost 50 silver for one protection. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? It's Wait, because it's so a, Master it, Crafted. Oh, it's not it, plus one armor rating. No, it anymore. indicates skill penalty and mobility penalty. So it's, it doesn't do anything for a buckler. Yeah, so it's kind of, well, the only thing, it's like harder to shatter. It's harder to shatter, it, yeah. But, but that's about it. Yeah, probably not really worth it. And the chain shirt, you said? Mm hmm. If it was the Brigandine, it would make more sense, but. <clears throat> yeah. Well. Yeah, the chain shirt would be 300 silver. Or no, 250. <laughs> I'm afraid that is about it. I have a vial of Pridonian oil, or a fire, I think they call it. Also, oh. I have two of those. Sort of magical, you know, alchemy is involved. How much do they cost? Uh, well, my price is. <laughs> uh, I am not. I cannot remember. Let's see. Mm. I'll also have, also have a uh, vial of acid if you are interested. Well, I'm but, always. I can create <laughs> acid on my own. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, you are an alchemist. That is good. The Pyrenean fire. I will sell you for you, my dear. Um, hmm. Seven silver pieces of flask. And I already have two on the ship, don't I? We have at least one. I don't know about two. Unless there's another one I don't know about. Oh. Yeah, it was just the one in the, oh, little, just... the jewelry box. All right. Um, 
so the wheels 20. are turning. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm <laughs> writing it down. So twenty for the buckler, buckler, and then seven plus seven. So, so thirty-four silver in total. Uh, for the buckler and the predatorian fire. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes, of course, of course. In fact, if you buy both, I will let you have uh, 26. Oh, all right. Because I have not seen you in these years. That's true. And you know what? Just because you lowered the price already, I won't haggle you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed I was looking forward to it, but it's just all right. Oh, do you want me to? <laughs> no, it is, the, the, the moment is past. <laughs> I will haggle for you any day, darling. Ah, uh, well, it's good to see you again. I must get to the Winter Kingdom one of these days, Malovia. It's very far away, though. Uh, I will say I'm not returning anytime soon, unfortunately. Speaking of which, I did hear a very strange rumor a few moons ago. Oh, pray tell. I should no, ask no. you about that, but I'm not sure you would be willing to share. I Something about a jilted lover and fleeing the country. <laughs> I don't know. How high is your persuasion <laughs> role? <laughs> <laughs> um, Something along those lines, since we are <laughs> pals and you did lower the price. Yes, something like that happened. I see. Well, I'm just curious. Occasionally, I'm an information broker, as you know. Not everything has to be material goods. Anyway, our little secret. I don't think it's any information that will aid you in any way, to be honest, friend. Mm, I would not be so sure. <laughs> so, may I put you down for the vile Pridonian fire? It burned the to top water, by the way. If you have not used it, very good to be at sea with such a thing. And the buckler of a very high quality. Um... It's the exceptional quality or the master? No, it's, well, unless you want the master one, but. Well, it'd be exceptional. It's exceptional is. Might as well. Yeah. yeah. Slightly right. less, less chance of being shattered, but that, that rarely comes up. So. I have, a, I have a question. If she puts on the perfumes, does that hire her persuasion? Maybe we'll see if you do it. <laughs> yeah. right, then I'm keeping I'm it. Just wondering. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Throw them, in, throw them in the dog's face when you're being tracked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Did you did you check it out with Alchemy's skill? I can't remember. Somebody I don't think did. so. Maybe not, not with the alchemy. But how no. did you guys figure out that's what it was? It had to be through alchemy. I thought um or maybe crap didn't the captain didn't say it? The cap the captain said it and I did a perception check and I think that you confirmed what he said. Yeah, I, I, yeah. So you, you basically know what it is, but he didn't say like specifically where the perfumes came from or if they were, but, uh, but you yeah, can take, it might, take the stopper off and it smells like perfume. <laughs> give you a boost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Poisonous perfume. Who knows? Mm. Yeah. Could Black be. lotus perfume. It's such a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Rubbed> all over. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark off the twenty-seven silver. He probably already did. Yep. Now you've got a buckler, so another point of armor when you have it in your hand. Cool. Round shield. And it's, uh, yeah. Quality and adds one protection and then no skill penalty. Yep. And then three Ionian fire so far. Okay. Yeah. So, All Buckler, right. what's your art? You have padded, you have a padded gambeson? Uh, no, I have soft leather jerkin. Oh, so, uh, soft leather. So, arm, yeah, it's one point of armor. The yeah. total armor is two. Yeah. So two with the buckler, yeah. Not bad. And it because yep. it doesn't really hinder your casting that much. Yeah. And also I'm distance fighter, so I'm not gonna get close unless I have to. Yeah. It's only happened once with the Kelpies, if I recall. I stayed on the ship the entire time. It was I got hit by the one of the slavers in our first episode. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Kelp make, making good your es escape. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is probably probably a good place to stop unless Kadir wants to do one last thing. There's not much else. We're probably heading back. I mean, I was just kind of like browse window shopping as we walked back, just looking at interesting fashion. That's all, but that doesn't need to be okay. role played out. I was just seeing what, you know, 
what 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 the fashion they have here is and just interesting you know yeah there are a couple of people ta- watching uh, but. a couple of tailor shops if you're yeah. yeah i mean i don't really need clothes i was just looking at because it's different than what i'm used to that's all it was just a, 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 a yeah just different cut different style different fabrics yeah uh, some of it is not as different as you might, might assume, and then other things kind of are. Hmm. But, um, you see a lot of Ismandian fashion at sea, probably even more than Brithian, because a lot of it's flowy, uh, which is also very Jan and Azurian as well. So those yeah, similarities. So I guess we, just head, we probably just head back to the ship then, as I imagine. So. So yeah, you get back there. Torek is. Uh, so you guys will come back for the catapult wheels to be put on. And um, so Marichka, when you get back to the ship, you uh, uh, notice that the crew is just, uh, most of the crew's gone. They're probably off to taverns and maybe shops as well. A couple people have come back and they're kind of hanging around. And as you guys are back at the ship, you do notice uh, eventually some men sail a smaller craft up next to the Crimson Skull pirate ship that you captured. And they get on top of it and they, they cut the, they undo the lines, you know, it's because it's tethered to you guys and they sail it away. So that's about really all that happens in the next hour or two as we get later in the morning. So, um, and as we uh, leave off, if you guys can make uh, perception rolls as our final moment am i back on the ship already or not uh y- yeah unless you wanted to wonder more yeah th- you would be back this is like two or three hours later gotcha to do, if you want to be back three 23 and 16 excellent I'm sorry for taking all the good rolls tonight. Good That's all right. Kadir <laughs> had the worst. Like, it's luckily he didn't kill anybody or you know scar anybody with his healing arts. So, <laughs> okay. So, Kadir has a good roll, but it still was like quite enough. Marichka, you happen to notice it's now like close to midday. It's like an hour before, and um, business as usual. The harbor's fairly busy here in Corellis. Carella, it's not like super hopping but it's fairly busy and through the crowd as you you just happen to be on the ship just kind of looking and you kind of look through the crowd of people that are and sailors that are on the area and ship builders etc and you notice uh someone looking right your way kind of dressed in a in a uh, a black cloak trimmed in like white fur and they look your way and right as you meet make eye contact with them because with the 23 you definitely did they suddenly kind of pull up the cowl and they start to head into the crowd. And something about that cloak looked familiar. It looks like a Malovian cloak. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> and that is where we will stop. Our <laughs> uh-huh. Raul, you sold me out! <laughs> <laughs> Of course so, he sold you out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Well, that they was got fun. here fast, didn't they? <laughs> well, this is like this is like three hours later. I know. No, it's like they oh, got the, here fast from Malovia. Well, from Malovia, right? <laughs> <laughs> instant travel. <laughs> He's like, hurry up, get to the standing stones, do your instant travel ceremony. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> was, Mount your dragon and fly here as quickly as possible. I mean. Good thing it's a full moon because I'm gonna need that that extra <laughs> yep. that extra strength. You got three nights of full moon coming up. Oh, this is, this is the first. Oh no, last night was the first night. Yeah, so you two more nights. So you got two more nights. It's okay. I'll just send Torek after him. I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> Torek, fetch. <laughs> it looked to be a. Uh, it looked to be a woman actually, a female form. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Still not good. Strangely but, enough, you didn't recognize the face, but you definitely the cloak had to be it. No, no, no it, I mean, it could be Scathian or Nort, but it looks very Malovian. The fact that it's uh, trimmed in Martin fur and it's black is very much a Malovian style. So, uh, secret vote, uh, Ian voted already, did his. I voted too. Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, it's about Bridget's roll. Cool, okay. And secret vote for Madison. So everybody got uh, four experience points. 
Wait. Yeah, four. And then uh, five to whoever wins. Cool. Madison is scheming. She voted. To figure out. You voted for the p- captured pirate captain? That's, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Orlando gets my vote. <laughs> Orlando got a vote. All right, Marichka wins two to one. Yay. All right, raise the roof. Kadir got the other vote. So, very good. So, um, Madison gets five, and everybody else got four. All right. And audience, thanks for watching. So, this is a pretty long session. Uh, I guess I'll uh, post it anyway, because there are a few people that watch these things. So, Well, thanks, everyone. We're going to be off for the next uh, month, four to five weeks, and then um, and we'll be back at it, because I'm really enjoying this campaign. I hope the players are also. I think Indeed. they are. And we may have to replace uh, Danny at the dropout. We may have to replace Randall, because replace Randall, because his, uh, obviously his schedule is being kind of weird. So we'll figure it out. So good night, everybody. Thanks for playing. Thanks, guys. See y'all. It was fun. Bye. And now it's, as always, awkward ending time. Yes. <laughs> Is there ever a non-awkward ending? <laughs> and later.